This is the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup, sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. Welcome inside Schmidt Stadium. We're in Edwardsville, Luzerne County. Tonight, it's the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup between King's College and Wilkes University. Good afternoon, everyone. The rain is gone. There's no jacket required, and both teams are ready to go for this annual rivalry game. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Ide. Joined today by former assistant coach at Wilkes at Kings and former Tunkanic Erie coach, Yancey Jack and Yon. Uh, we take a look at the MAC standings right now. Perennial Power, Delaware Valley's in first. But Kings is right there. Wilkes is right there. They're talking bowl games for both schools. They really are. And I just want to start out by saying this is the closest rivalry in the United States, separated by one city block. There's so much online for both teams, and it starts with pride. Now it's going into the postseason in terms of bowl games. Wilkes is on the bubble. They have to hope that Lev Val loses to an 0-9 Albright to get into the playoff picture. Kings, on the other hand, is in the Centennial MAC Championship Bowl, but they're hoping for that at-large bid in the NCAAs. That'd be great. Let's talk about the Monarchs first. Jeff Nars been here for 13 years with eight wins right now, maybe nine today. That's the most in his tenure here with them. It's all led by Tyler Moore, the returning graduate quarterback. But the Tyler Carey is the leading receiver from all fours. We're going to talk about him as our spotlight player. Tyler Carey's averaging 22 yards on a carry. He's the number one receiver in the conference. He's also got seven touchdowns this year, and Bob, you alluded to the fact that he is an old Forge Blue Devil, so we're really proud to see one of our local boys doing good. A rash of injuries that really hurt Wilkes, especially at the quarterback position. Um, they've lost two of their last three games, but one thing, one positive for them, the Colonels going down the stretch has been that running game of Elijah Jules. Wow, Elijah Jules is only a junior, and he's the number one rusher in the conference. He's got over 800 yards this year. He's actually the number 21 running back in terms of scoring this year with 12 touchdowns. He's just a beast when he runs the ball. You watch a lot of film. We've talked to both coaches, so let's go for your keys to the game. First for the visitors from Kings. For Kings, they obviously they got to try to stop that big run game, and he also wants to make sure they don't commit any erroneous errors, and especially on offense to try to keep balanced. And for the Colonels? And for the Colonels, limit turnovers and really, really try to do a great job on their own takeovers. Jake Sarwar is on the sidelines from the Fox 56 News First Step 10. We'll join him after the break. It's the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup between Kings College and Wilkes University. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup. Sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. Both teams are on the field. We are ready for the 26th annual Mayor's Cup game, and we are happy today to have on the sidelines from the Fox 56 News First at 10, Jake Sarwar. And Jake, uh, they will play next year, but uh, both teams will be in different, different leagues, but, you know, there's still going to be a Mayor's Cup. What do you have about that? Hey guys, happy Mayor's Cup, that is right. You know, beginning in 1993, like you were saying, the 26th anniversary is today when Kings actually reactivated their football program. Now, ever since then, they've been in the MAC Conference, the Mid-Atlantic, but like you were saying, Wilkes will be changing after this season. They'll actually be heading over to the Landmark Conference. Now, being that they're not in the same conference does not mean that they will not have the opportunity to play again next year. They will be playing this exact same game as the very first game of the season on September 2nd, 2023, just as a non-conference game. Bob, back to you. Well, before we focus on 2023, Coach, why don't we focus on 2022? <laughs> Kings won the toss. They deferred to the second half. The, we'll see this Wilkes offense come back out onto the field. Kyle Priscavich uh, is the kicker. He's a senior. He's been around for a few years. Back to receive. It looks like it's uh, Whitaker and James uh, ready to get this one underway at the 10. And uh, Kings won last year's game over at McCarthy Stadium. This is the 35th overall meeting between the two teams. Uh, Wilkes owns a 22-12 edge on that. Uh, in 2019 was the last time Wilkes won 24-14. What do we expect today? A bloodbath. <laughs> it's going to be a slobber knocker with these two teams. Uh, they, they, they respect each other during the season, but this week 
they don't communicate, they don't, they really just want to get this game going. And there's so much on the line in terms of postseason right now. They've got to be sharp and they're going to be playing tough. And we know Wilkes' running game is really, really good. So they're going to the Landmark Conference next year uh, with Susquehanna, like combing uh, Keystone College in football only, Moravian. Uh, that's going to be quite a change for, for Wilkes, but and also open some things up maybe for Kings. It, it, it will in terms of how they, they got more of a chance now uh, during the season to get those wins, to look at that Centennial Conference uh, Championship Bowl that they talk about the, with the teams that they're playing. Here's the kickoff. Mayor's Cup is underway for 2022. Whitaker from his 10. Up past the 30, and that's where this Colonel's drive will start. Xavier Powell getting the start today. Richardson uh, is hurt, number 10, and we'll see Powell. Expected to be a wide receiver this year, so he hasn't had a lot of playing time. He really hasn't, and when you transition from one position to another due to necessity, you do your best. And again, if you look at his stats, one touchdown uh, with four interceptions, you're not going to say he's, he's oh, good. He's not. He's a great athlete, and he's playing with the position the team needs him in. But when you're handing the ball off to the number one running back in the, in the conference, it makes your job easier. Powell actually started last year's game, this game, in the Mayor's Cup game, uh, a year ago over at McCarthy. So he'll be single digits. They'll give it to Jewel. We'll see a lot of this off the right-hand side. We talked about Jewel. He had 180 yards and a touchdown uh, against Weiner this year. He's the top running back in the MAC. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at the first run. Tell us what they, you see. They, they're going with the RPO again. Nice job by Powell on that with the fake and the read. He did a real nice job. But that offensive line has been doing so much to let Jewel get those yards he needs. They did not have a good day last week throwing the ball. Powell's first pass is caught by Grover, and he's going to be short of a first down. Third and short now facing. There's Colonel's team. That's second in the MAC in scoring this year. They average 26 points per game. They're second in total offense, 357 yards per game, and up there, as you might expect, in the rushing attack. They really are, and they're trying to be well balanced today with it, but we know they're going to be relying on the legs of Jewel. Quick out and fighting for it is Schwarzer off, and they're going to give him a first down for the Colonels. Let's take a look at this offense. As I mentioned, averaging 357 yards per game. But short, not a lot of guys in the backfield. We talked about both of them already. The receivers are very good. Whitaker's not starting, he's actually their, their leading receiver. Pelcher and Grover are in there. And the line is pretty big and some experience. Oh, they really are. They average 292 pounds across the board, and that's what they do. They allow, they move people, and they allow Elijah Jules to do that to try to gash the defense. Jules, a gain of 11, up past midfield into Monarch territory. So a nice drive early on here from Wilkes. And you'll see that offensive line. Two, we got two guys from Mount Carmel, the center and the left tackle, doing a nice job in there. And you see how they're just moving that first line, reestablishing the line of scrimmage to allow Elijah Jules to pick and choose where he wants to run. Right side for Jules, pick up of uh, about three. He's shifty, uh, not very, not very big, just five eight, and he's only a sophomore. And, and 170 pounds, so he's not a big bruising back, but he's got great vision. And you saw in that last play that he did a cutback. He started going left, cut back to his right to gain a, a nice three yards. Jules out of New Jersey. Stays in the backfield with Powell. Four-man front for the Monarchs. Powell looking to the right. Quick Ooh. hit and nail down the outside. Big hit put on, but a nice catch by Zane Grover out of East Stroudsburg for a gain of eight. Boy, Amir Gibson, he he dropped the hammer on him on that one. That was a nice job. He's got lots of time. Powell's got lots of time. Look at that, right in there, shoulder pad, right on shoulder pad. He made him pay for that. And that's what defensive backs have to do, especially with these receivers, where they know Wilkes isn't really predominantly a pass team. Big rush, they know Jules is gonna get the ball and Muzzaleski's in there along along with the other linebacker, Dylan White, and they keyed on him. 
boy, Brandon Mozaleski has great call by the defense coordinator for the Monarchs. Dial that up, stop this drive. Watch him come blowing right up inside the A gaps. Nice job, nice wrap up. Mozaleski, an old Forge grad coming in, making his hometown proud right there by dropping him for a loss. Dylan White also in there out of Carlisle. He came in with 52 total tackles. He's a senior. He has 112 total tackles throughout his career. So the drive stalls, high kick. Fair caught, catch by DiGregorio inside the 10. So Kings gonna start right about there on their first drive and we'll see the graduate student Tyler Moore. He's been around for a long time and he's having a great season. He really is, 2,126 yards, 15 touchdowns. Now, we watched last week at Misericordia, he had one of his interceptions and it wasn't him, the ball gets tipped. And he's had a few of those throughout the season so he really does a nice job with them. And we know they're gonna be doing a lot of passing. I'd be interested to see if uh, Wilkes' defense coordinator is gonna dial up a blitz here because they are at the uh, five, six yard line. More quick handoff off to the left hand side to Ellis. And he gains about five. Nice job, a good safe play. Get some more room behind you so you don't get that safety. Look at this, he does a nice job dipping that shoulder in. Number eight coming up and does a nice job trying to take his legs out, Danelle Mackey Woodson. Ellis, a sophomore of the Philadelphia area, 369 total yards. Long shot by Moore, trying to hit DiGregorio. He had a step on the secondary, but the pass was overthrown. So Boy, De De Gregorio, wow, he has gotten so much faster from watching him at Old Forge. Wow, and I keep mentioning Old Forge because there's a great connection here. Look at this, he had him beat by three steps, just overshot him. See if they go to that later on. So a big defensive stop here now by the home team will give the ball in real good field position. More though, little screen pass set up, but Quickly read by Steele Hess out of Whitehall. One yard gain and Monarchs, here comes the punt team. I like the offensive call, but boy, Steele Hess does a great job sniffing this out. Look, he didn't get beat and he's right there, wraps him up and drops him right back at the line of scrimmage and forcing them to punt. Anthony Prado back to punt. Prado back to punt right at his goal line. Higgins back to receive. Grover back to receive along with Mackey. They should get good field position out of this. Prado, a short kick. Oh, oh it's touched. It was touched by a colonel by Grover, but luckily for Wilkes, they get the ball at very good field position. Let's take a look at the Kings defense right now, coming in, averaging, just giving up 16. Recovers points per, per game. Pretty big up front, a lot of couple of seniors and a junior in there. So you already saw how active the linebackers can be with White and Mozaleski and Gleason. And the secondary, I don't know how tested they're gonna be uh, through the air, but they're definitely gonna be tested on the ground. Crascio, he's been around a long time. 64 total tackles for the New Jersey native, number one. So Powell back out for this offense. With good field position, back to Jules. Little gap, he gains only one. An interesting formation, they go with a shotgun and they go with an uh, eye backfield offset and all they ran on that was an iso play to the outside. And you see number 65, the big power back guard, Damian Goulon coming in there, 6'3", 295 pounds. Wilkes' offensive line averages 292 pounds, King's defensive line is 248 pounds. So Jonathan Drock, uh, also the offensive coordinator, head coach here. Fifth season overall, just fourth coaching because of COVID year. Trying to set up a screen, they do. Jules with blockers in front. The shifty sophomore takes it down inside the 15 yard line. 26 yard gain and Wilkes is on the door. Wow, watch Jewel, this is a, they set this screen up perfectly. Quarterback does a great job dropping back. Look at that burst that he has and speed. He's bobbing and weaving in between offensive linemen, blocking for him and defenders trying to take him down. 
Good play call there, as you mentioned. It did not do well last week in the pass game in their loss to Stevenson. They lost 28 nothing. They only had 49 yards total passing yards. But Powell, he was out for that game. He's still not 100%. They had the backups in, and they didn't do very well against Stevenson down there. And they're out of Whitaker. Looking to get the edge. Kings is right there. And a, another big hit. Mozaleski lays the wood on him. Just a yard gain on Nate Whitaker. 5'9", senior on Upper Darby. You see they go with the speed sweep right on this. And look, watch right here what Zaleski does. He's he's pulling up, too. He was like, <laughs> and he's still with that big old body of his. I mean, he's a 200-pounder, but he looked like he was playing like 250 right there. No gain on that, so nice job by the Kings defense. Dean just couldn't pick up the block on the outside. Powell going to be back, has protection. Out. Jules was not expecting the ball. Mozaleski was there. Goes incomplete. A little communication oh, breakdown. Uh, yeah, I don't think he was expecting that because he didn't even look back for the ball. And, Bob, you had mentioned last week against Stevenson, they were down to their fourth quarterback. So they really had a lot of inexperience with that, hence the reason why they only have 49 yards. Here's the screen. Look, he's not even looking. He's, he's looking downfield. Oh, it was like one of those, wow. Well, they say always have your head turned, right? Absolutely. Your eyes are on, your head's on a swivel just like your eyes. So, a big third down here. Here comes the blitz off the outside. They pick it up to the end zone. And it is caught for a touchdown, Wilkes. Powell's pass to number eight, Higgins for a total touchdown. Looks like Higgins in the end zone somehow got his feet down. And made the catch for the Wilkes score. Watch this play. Lots of time. Great job by that offensive line to give, give Powell time to throw. Boom, he, all we need is one foot down in, in college. We don't need two. He was in there, and he did get forced out, but he had the one foot down, drug it in there for the touchdown. 16-yard strike, and Wilkes gets on the board through the air. The extra point is good. The extra point is up and through, and with 7.59 remaining, timeout on the field. It's Wilkes 7, Kings nothing. Nice crowd on hand, a beautiful afternoon for college football in November. <laughs> 60 degrees, the rain is gone. No snow in the air, Coach, which is always good, and the wind is uh, very minimal at best. So we you know, couldn't ask for a better game in November. Wilkes win five plays, 43 yards, 204 off the clock. Powell to Higgins in the end zone. Boy, that was a great catch. I don't know if we can see that again after the kickoff, but that was that a fantastic was catch in the back of the end zone. Phenomenal concentration on the receiver's part, making sure he's doing everything he's been taught. Make sure you drag your feet down, two hands on the ball, pull it in. Again, just that was a beautiful drive for the Colonels right now. Now, let's see how Kings comes back out. They're the ones now that maybe this time are going to come out with the run game because we saw that was pretty good on their first play of uh, – of the game. Reverse, 204 guys doing a little trickery back there. Carey pulls it up. He has a nice return to the 39. So De Gregorio to Carey, we've seen that before. Here's the replay of the touchdown again. Oh, of the, sorry, that's the replay of the. The return, look at that. Return. When you have chemistry from playing four years together at high school and you bring it along to the college level. Now, again, Coach Nor is a smart guy. He knew that these guys had chemistry, and let's, let's work that chemistry and see what we can do. Well, with 55 total passing yards, they've already eclipsed last week's total for <laughs> Wilkes, so that's a good sign for them. Let's see if the Monarchs can answer. Carry over the middle, Di Gregorio. Sheds a tackle, hit out of bounds, no flag. He's got a first down inside Colonel territory at the 48. So 12-yard gain. Nice job. The defense that time, they lined up in their 4-3. They dropped their right defensive end, number five, Adam Piston, in to drop back the zone blitz. And again, he just couldn't keep up with De Gregorio coming across the field. Make that a 15-yard gain. and. Monarchs on the move, trying to answer the Wilkes score. Inside to Haley. 
big defensive stand. Take a look now, as we can, at the Monarchs' offense, coming in averaging 23 points per game. Moore, Haley, and Cohen will uh, in the backfield as the H-back. There's the wide receivers, two guys from Old Forge. Joe Herman, don't forget about Joe in there, as well as Whitehall. And then up front, a uh, couple seniors in there, Coach. Uh, Liam Carroll's from Notre Dame Green Pond down in the Lehigh Valley. He is the left tackle today. He knows what it's like to run that spread offense at Green Pond. Boy, they always, year in and year out, put tremendous offensive numbers up. Good hole for Haley, and the first-year player shoots through the gap. Nice gain. Four to Haley again. Well, Haley, Haley coming in with three touchdowns, 432 total three. yards. He's out of Penwood. Well, here, you'll four. see. What Coach Nar wanted to do was make sure that he could one of his keys to the game was try to be balanced on offense. And they're getting some nice runs from their backs this year uh, in this game. It's just nice to see that they're being that well balanced, trying to establish a run game, because they know they have a very effective pass game. Good protection. Here comes the rush, though. They get him. Took him too long to find somebody. And it's a sack that looks like the ball might be out. Flag late, well after the play, so definitely some jarring down there. Adam Piston's at the bottom. Let's hear we go. See, he gets, look at that, he's rapping again. Who else? It was number four was in there. Angel Ramos out of Parkland. That defensive line, I'll tell you what, one thing they've done is that I'm watching how active their hands and feet are in here. So it's the Parkland pair out there. <laughs> Ramos and Piston get him. Flag came out late. Definitely some words exchanged as they fought for the ball. It will remain King's ball. But let's see what the referee today has to say. It's We talked about at the beginning of the game, Bob, this is where the emotions really have to stay in check because there's a lot of jawing going on, and you've got to keep cool and calm. Again, this is a big game for both teams, and there's a lot of time left to go. David Stewart, our referee today. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 57. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Fourth down. That's number 57, first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Well, so Kings retains possession and it brings up. I think a fourth down? No, yeah, because that's after the play. So it's the play counts. All the chains have third down. It is fourth down. The punt team has to come on. So a good play there for Wilkes, and they get the unsportsmanlike. And that was uh, number 57, Gabe Fatizzi, who was the culprit on that play. And I'm sure Coach Nar will talk to him and say, look, you got one, you get another one, you're done for next week, and that won't be good for the team. Keep your cool. So the junior punter is on. He averages 34 yards on the punt this year. Has 14 inside the 20. He's looking for a good kick here. He hasn't had a good kick. I've seen him in two weeks. So let's see what little low liner. Higgins is going to let it drop. He picks it at the 25. Good job on special teams down there by Kings. They knock him down. And the Colonels offense up 7, 538 remaining, have the ball at the 32. So far, Wilkes looks like a totally different team from a week ago. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, when you have a quarterback, you know, one of your, your starting quarterback back, it makes a world of difference. And we saw that with their pass game. So they just couldn't key up on Jewel that old game like Stevenson did last week. So Powell back out, he's 6-7 so far, 55 yards and a touchdown. So even if he's 75%, looks like a better offense already. Plenty of protection, doesn't want to run. Big hit out there, trying to connect with his receiver. That was Amir Gibson who, who made the hit. Corey 
Nice job on the breakup here. Look at this pass, one with the two with the three. He had almost four seconds to throw that ball, and that was a perfectly placed ball, but wow, does Gibson come in and just break that up. He's only 5'6", 170 pounds, and he's from District 11, Whitehall High School. Senior 6'4", 205 pounder, Corey Peltzer, almost got his head taken off on that. <laughs> but he's back, so we're gonna go trips to this near side. Just right around to give it to Jules. Jules with a gap and more. Jules is off to the races. Eliza Jules. It's a Colonel touchdown. 68 yards for the sophomore. And Wilkes extends their lead. And you see why he is the number one rusher in the conference. He's number 12. 12 in the country in terms of scoring. Now that gives him his 13th touchdown. Look at this burst and look at that speed. And he's a man possessed right now, driving all the way into that end zone. Bob, you said 68 yards, I believe, for that one. That's why he's doing what he does for this Colonel team. Well, the jewels is flowing here and the juice is flowing as well for Wilkes. The extra point. Right, Rasa is up and good. And a bit of a stunner here with 5.20 left in the first quarter. Wilkes leads Kings 14 to nothing. Here's that replay, watch this. He gets that ball on the inside power. He cut back inside. He didn't like what was going on to the outside. And he just came right back across the left side, 68 yards for a touchdown. He, that's his 13th touchdown on the ground. His longest this year was 72 yards, so he almost matched almost. that. But that's a big two <laughs> touchdown lead here in this Mayor's Cup and a bit of a stunner against a, Will, a Kings team that came in eight and one. And Kings right now looks a little flat on their side. Um, I, I think they might be in shock. Again, they knew how good Jewel was. And again, that passing situations that they went through on that second series, I think may have put them back and they're starting to like scramble a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Talking with the uh, training staff from Kings during pregame, I asked them what happened at the Albright game and what ended up, they were up 21 nothing halftime. Uh, Albright came back out and started running the option, which they haven't seen all year. So they really were scrambling, hence the game went into overtime, but Kings pulled that off. Return by Carey. Nice return up past the 32. So the Kings offense coming back out now, trailing by 14. Now we saw Kings last week. I, I don't know if they struggled against Misericordia, but Misericordia held them pretty, pretty good on offense. The only score in that first half we saw last week was on a block kick, block punt. So their offense didn't really score until what, the fourth quarter Until last week. Late, so a bit late. of a struggle so far for the Monarchs the last couple of weeks offensively. Well, it, it, once you start getting tendencies on teams, I'm not going to say it's easy because it's never easy. They know they're a predominantly pass team. So if their secondary and linebackers can start doing their jobs better and they practice that hard all week, it makes that offense really, really struggle. Well, Kings did win the game against Mr. Cordia 14-0, but as I said, it was closer than I think a lot of people might have expected. Well, we know Kings did miss two field goals also, but here's that same play right there. They're trying to run that outside zone. That's what they ran that first series, trying to get him to squeeze outside, but the defense is doing a nice job, taking on the block. Linebackers are able to flow and then shut the running back down for short gains. It's been a seven-game winning streak since their opening game uh, second game loss to Delaware Valley. So here comes Moore again, second and eight. Out to Cohen. Cohen's got a nice gainer up near midfield. So it's a first down Kings to get things going. They're going to come up quickly and get that play in, see if they can catch this Wilkes defense on their heels. Again, they just have him doing a simple out pattern, tucks the ball and runs the yards after the catch, the yaks. Gets them a key first down. That's what Kings needs to do. Just keep pounding the rock, get the first downs, and good things will happen. 14-yard gain on that pass play. Fake the handoff. More with time, but the rush is going to come. And tries to get it to carry a little bit short. And let's take a look now at the defense. 
for Wilkes University this afternoon, giving up just 15 points per game. Talked about Ramos and Pittston. Whitehall, Steel Hess is out of Whitehall, so nice Lehigh Valley contingent in there. Linebackers mm -hmm. very active with Holcomb and, and James. And the secondary uh, going to be tested today. They're going to they're going to run four D, five D backs this week, Coach. And uh, Hernandez has 23 total tackles on the year. Uh, Leroy Marshall's really been outstanding too, number three. So a gain by Ellis. Inside Colonel territory, they go. Bob, you mentioned they're four two. Their Colonel's four two five defense. When you're uh, facing a team that predominantly passes, that's a tough defense to try to pick apart because you have the extra player back there. Even if they you go man to man coverage. Kings this year in third downs. To Going at a 32%, 40 of 122. That's a big third down here. They can pick this up. Moore is going to tuck it. Wilkes is there. It's a sack for the Colonels. It's the Parkland pair again. Piston again. Ramos in there. Second sack of the day for the Colonels. We keep talking about chemistry. Again, when you have kids that played four years prior coming in, there's that chemistry. They know what they're doing, and they're really starting to put a lot of pressure on from their positions. You'll see right here, they just did a, a, what we call a knee stunt, the nose in the end. They switch, they come in, and they do a nice job, and that confuses the offensive line. So Kings is 0 for 3 on third down this afternoon. They're going to be forced to punt again in the first quarter. Under 3 to play. Kick goes to the left. And it's picked up quickly. And Wilkes will have the ball one more time. Doing the returning there. Grover again. And Wilkes will have it, let's see, just past the 40-some uh, yard line. Oh, back to the 35. But again, good field position to start another drive for the Colonels. When you're not starting inside your own red zone, uh, like Kings did on their second drive. I mean, they were at the six-yard line. This does make a world of difference. You got 35 yards behind you and a shorter field to try to get that score. I like how uh, Kings is dressed in their all yellows today with mm -hmm. the, the navy, the flat blue helmet. Interesting look. 137 total yards of offense so far for Wilkes. Just in the first quarter, they've ran 14 plays so far. Jules, nowhere to go. Read nicely out there by Dallas Solomon out of Hazleton. He makes the tackle for a loss. That's his ninth on the year. Boy, Dallas Solomon, 6'3", 250 pounds. Look at that. He moves really well for a big guy. He wraps him up, takes him down, and then trying to get some more of the 52 for the Lions. Doing, uh, the, excuse me, the Monarchs are doing a great job defensively, bottling them up at the line of scrimmage. Solomon's had a nice career here with Kings, 88 total tackles coming in. That's his 20th tackle for a loss in his career. He would like to leave with the Mayor's Cup again. Big rush, Powell sees it off the mark, trying to hit Grover out there, wide and outside. I don't know if there's some confusion on the routes on that. Number two and number eight for the Colonels were in the same general area, which is not good because that brought four of the Monarchs defenders right there. So we see there goes swing out with Jewel. Jewel this time was looking. You saw they were within three yards of each other, and I'm sure Coach Drock right now is going to be talking to his receivers, saying, guys, run your pattern. Keep it simple. Third downs this year, 33% average for Wilkes. A little bit better than that today, two of three so far. They want to keep this drive going. Fake to Jules. Down the side, off the mark. Trying to hit Johnson down there. It goes out of bounds, so Wilkes holds. They'll get the ball back. Trailing 14 to nothing. The fake in there, I'd love to see Jewel. I'm not telling he's a great running back, but boy, if he sells that a little bit better, they'd really start flowing with him. See Di Gregorio back to receive this punt. Orlando. Nice high Wow. Kick. Really high. Di Gregorio comes up, makes the fair catch at the 27. So here comes King struggling on offense. So far, Coach, 
uh, in today's game. Total plays, 12 total yards, just 40. Wow. And, and that's not the way Coach Nor won. Again, it is a road trip. This is, and again, a road trip. We're talking about three miles uh, from their stadium. So it's just a matter. Get these guys. They got to wake up and they got to start playing their brand of football. 28 total seniors on this Kings team, 13 starters. They were picked eighth in the MAC to finish. They're going to probably finish first or second, most likely second. Second, right, I would imagine. That's yeah. a great season. I, oh, it's absolutely wonderful, especially when they, they were counted really out, down and out, and they just wanted to prove to everybody how good they can be. Well, they need to get things going here on offense. They're going to hand it off to Ellis. He has room. Flag comes in late. He's maybe holding. be another mistake for the Monarchs. Holding. Offense. Number 60. 10-yard penalty. First out. They're making mistakes, have our Kings, and it's hurting them. It's really, it's it's been so detrimental. Every time they have a great play going, it gets called back. And the culprit on that was number 60, Zachary Taryn Wimmer out of Liberty High School. We're seeing a lot of District 11 kids being represented by the Monarchs. And that's where Coach Nar was actually from, down that region. Sets them back. Still first down, though. Moore, the rush comes, and the rush takes them down. Their ball's out. Wilkes has it. Holcomb comes up with the ball. I didn't see who had made the sack, but the Colonels are knocking on the door. Well, big number 97 was in there. They're doing a lot of twisting and turning up front with the defensive line, but you got to credit the secondary of the Colonels right there. That's the second time they've got so much pressure on them that the ball's come out. And this time, dividends paid off for the defense. First name Steele, last name Hess out of Whitehall, made the sack. Holcomb had the fumble recovery. Wilkes up two touchdowns, trying to add to that late here in the first quarter. Balls at the 11 yard line. Again, Kings won this game last year, coach. 24 14. Powell's first carry. Strings him out a little bit. It's got some positive yardage. Still keeping those legs going. So, second down. And inside the 10. They can get a first down at the 1. Well, I, a, after that last offensive series for the Colonels, I saw Coach Drock, he put his arm around Powell and was talking him through, just saying, relax, just do what you got to do. And I know Coach was a little hesitant on how healthy he's going to be, so we didn't think we were going to see any runs from him. But I think Powell just said, no, I'm good to go, Coach. He got a nice four yards for him. Xavier Powell, Jr. out of Poughkeepsie, New York. Kind of an emergency duty to... Play quarterback again, again. Expected to be a receiver this year. Jules with a blocker in front. Good. Looks like a tackle in there by Carcio. So it's third down now. Carriccio on this one. Look at that. 65 gets stood up. He's a big boy anyway. Grulon is 6'3". Again, he's got to get out there and start hitting some people. He took that hit, and that's what allowed Caraccio to come up there and make that hit. The 26th Annual Mayor's Cup. First quarter's in the books. It's been all curdles here at home. Can they pick up a win for the first time since 2019? They're well on their way. Quarter number two on the other side. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup. Sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2022 Mayor's Cup. The score right now is 14 for the Wilkes University Colonels, 0 for the King's College Monarchs. But I'm joined right now by a Wilkes University graduate student, Rich Hermius. Rich, how are you doing today? Not too bad, and yourself? Not too bad. So I heard in 2021 you got your bachelor's in business administration with that marketing concentration, and now you're working on your MBA. You gotta tell us, what was that major job offer that you got just recently? Well, back in August, um, I received a job opportunity to be an account executive with the New York Football Giants. 
And um, that came about with, you know, being in the right place at the right time and networking and the hard work that I put in back at Wilkes. Sure, absolutely. So you're talking about that hard work that was put in at Wilkes and networking. How did they really prepare you, though, to have, you know, that role to take on a job like that? So Wilkes has done a good job preparing their students. I actually had my internship back in 2019 as a sophomore, in which I was hired full-time back in 2019. And um, there's a course called Integrated Management Experience, in which teaches you all the necessary tools that you need and the capabilities that they provide to run a business in its entirety all by yourself. Sure. Now, I heard, too, that you've already started this job. Tell me, what is the most interesting thing so far about working for the New York Giants organization? The most interesting thing is going into work every day. I, you know, I have the luxury of going into the office and being able to eat with the guys. Um, one of the most, I would say, interesting and fun things, I had the chance of talking with Daniel Jones wow. and Dexter Lawrence, who are two of the team's captains, which was a great experience. Yeah. And finally, before I let you go, what's one piece of advice you have for a student in high school that's coming up and wants a career in professional sports? So I would just let you know that you need to value your time you know there's a lot of things that you can get into in college and you know it can be scary and overwhelming but as long as you realize that you know all that time is value to you and you do the best that you can during it great things like this will happen well rich thank you so much happy thank mayor's you. cup guys back to you up in the booth <laughs> thank you guys and as you saw in the box and box uh, wilkes completes the drive they put a score in Elijah Jules, a five-yard pass from Xavier Powell. It was three plays, just 11 yards, and they make the turnover, pay dividends, and they're up 21-0, Coach. This is going to, I mean, they're just going <laughs> to, the adrenaline's just pumping for the yellow and blue right now. Here's the touchdown. So we can see a swing pass. You see Jules get out there. He looks that ball in. Good ball security. And again, great blocking downfield by his receivers. I mean, that's what Number makes four, them so five. dangerous. I guess it tells you how important a quarterback is that knows what he's doing. They put a couple guys last year who didn't play before last week. They had no success. They put Powell, he comes back, injured, no injured. We don't know, 100% or not. But it's made a difference today. He's, he's been in on two scores. Jules is running the ball nice. Wilkes looks like a totally different team. Well, two, well, they've thrown for two touchdowns, mm -hmm. uh, which is they couldn't do anything last week. And, again, when you're down to your fourth quarterback, which I'm sure Coach Schrock, I didn't want to even bring it up or approach the subject <laughs> with him, saying, you know, what, you know, your playbook is very limited and you have the number one running back in the league, uh, they can start keying on that and shutting him down, making your life, forcing you to pass and not doing well. Carey's has some nice returns. He's out of the gap. Tyler Carey down the field, putting on the Jets, and this is one way the Monarchs can get back into it on special teams. And they do. Touchdown, Kings. What I liked about that was the speed. And I mentioned that earlier, how much faster he looks and how much stronger he looks. But number 22, D. Gregorio, his old Forge homeboy, comes right back in here to help lead block in here. You'll see that he's, he's trailing right now behind. And look at that. D. Gregorio, great burst. And he wants to just get right up in front of 17. Not going to hit him, just a shield. And watch his carry go in gets the Monarchs back onto the scoreboard and into this game. Well, he had some nice returns early on. He gave Kings good field position, but that one really was pretty good for Scavage on for the PAT. It is up and through. That's the shot of adrenaline. We talked about that with Kings. That's the shot that the Monarchs needed to get them back into this game. The 87-yard touchdown. It's pretty good. Let's go down back to Jake on the sidelines and Jake some more about the Monarchs. Yeah, absolutely, guys. That's right. King's College has a special program called Single Digit Tough, which is when they award certain members on their football team a single number digit so that that's based off of their merit, it's based off leadership skills, and they get to keep it throughout their entire time on the King's football team. Those numbers this year are 0, 1, 3, eight and nine. All five of those members, again, will keep that for as long as they're on the football team. Back to you guys up in the studio. There you see a couple there that have uh, played very well in their careers with the Monarchs. Uh, you see uh, Mozaleski in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we remember him <laughs> playing at Old Forge. His, his dad, we saw him this year at Old Forge. He's the athletic director. I mean, overall, 162 total tackles for Brendan Mozaleski, 19 and a half tackles for a loft, six sacks and interceptions. Quite a career, and he keeps saying, we want more Blue Devils with the Monarchs. How about that? Well, why not? I mean, they've they found a nice pipeline of players there in Old Forge, the pizza capital of the world. But more importantly, 
Brandon Mozaleski really understood what it takes to be a successful student athlete with the student being emphasized because he's done great work in the classroom. Hence the reason, like Jake said, that's why they have that program for guys like him. He's studying marketing. He will graduate in May. So this kickoff, Whitaker from his 10. Can he return the favor? Good tackle down there. Great job by number 26 to make a tackle on Whitaker. Looks like uh, Hassel. Nice job. He looks that ball in. And again, nice setup with their those all those golden jerseys up front blocking. And now it's just a shoestring tackle and number 46 and 27 coming in to make sure he was down. Whitaker has the speed to break it, so good job by the Monarch special team. So one touchdown for Kings. It came on the kickoff return by Tyler Carey. So the Wilkes offense back on the field. 20 plays they've run, 146 total yards. And most of that has been through the air. It's actually 60 on the through the air. And Jules with the nice, nice little carry. About four on that. Boy, Damian Grulon, 6'3", 295 pounds. Coming into your screen right there. Does a nice job lead block, and he hits up on the linebacker to allow Jules to get a good four yards to get the Colonels kind of out of that deep zone that they're in right now. Carcio on the tackle for the Monarchs. Brings up... Second down. For Powell. Jules, nothing there, but a flag comes in. This may be holding. King's defense reading that well. Boy, I saw the linebacker. Jake Rupert came in, the sophomore linebacker came in. He was starting to blitz, I think, and again, he went to the side they were blitzing. So I think the Colonels now, I think the Monarchs are settling in. We'll see what the call is. Holding, offense, number 70. 10 yard penalty, second down. You see 33 right in your screen there. He's, he's scraping across right in there, and he ends up coming up and getting involved in that tackle. Nice job. What I started to say was the Monarchs, I think, are settled down now. They're, they're starting to do their keys and their reads, and they're going to start making life difficult now for the Colonels. Second and 16 now from the 16. Powell back. Has room if he wants to run. He's hit from behind on the throw. And he finds Jules. Jules got behind the secondary inside Monarch territory. And it's a 34 yard pass play. Great job by Powell. He barely got that off. He really did. Look at this. They do a stunt in there. They're getting pressure. He's getting wrapped, does a nice ball. And Jules is right there. And he comes up limber. I'm trying to. Yep, Mozaleski got behind Mozaleski and Carcio who we've talked about. There you see Jules maybe came down a little bit on that knee. Going to take a seat and a breather. We'll check on him a little bit later on. So Monarchs giving up a big play. Colonels inside Kings territory one more time. And we have a timeout on the field, 12-51. Coach Drock trying to call it. Uh, Jonathan Drock, of course, the ninth coach in Wilkes history. He's 20-11 overall. Everyone in the MAC missed the 2020 season. Mm-hmm. So he's just four years. You know, last year they started 5-0. and They didn't end the way they wanted to end. This year they started 5-1. and They've lost two of the last three. But they want to get some momentum going into this. And it, I think it's going to start with the quarterback, Powell, playing well in backup. And then on your replay here now, Most Lesky is a linebacker trying to keep up with a running back that came flying out of the backfield. Had him beat, but he did a nice job recovering. And again, Jewel just landed on that knee. And he's on the sideline. He's up and walking right now, which is a good sign for him. And th these trainers are going to make sure that he's 100% before he can go back in. Isaiah Rodriguez was the starting quarterback, a sophomore. He's 6'6". He was probably the best quarterback in the MAC in the first three, four games. Then he got hurt. Then they went to Powell. He got hurt. Last week we said they came to the <laughs> third and fourth string. For you know That didn't work out as well. Powell comes back in. But Rodriguez, he's the future. We saw him before the game. He, he's, he's a specimen. A, he's big, big kid. Wow. And uh, he's strong. That's what Coach Drock was saying, how strong he is and the numbers that kid can put up. 
So after the timeout, quick out to the right inside, Whitaker, the senior, puts a stiff arm on. He wants to take home the Mayor's Cup on his last game, and they're going to move the chains. That was number 24 on 24, Tian Sherrod trying to defend him from Pensbury High School, District 1 down there in Bucks County. He just said, get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's look at he's, he's just like. Again, a senior. <laughs> Uh, on his career, he had coming into the day, not adding that catch in, 71 catches, 1,296 total yards and 13 touchdowns for Nate Whitaker out of Upper Darby, playing his last game in a Wilkes uniform here at home anyway, lest they make a bowl game next week. Jules back in. Ooh. Big hit in there from the secondary. Jules bounces back up, gain of eight. Corey Pelter came in. Wow. But it's good to see Jewel back in there. He wasn't running like he it was hurt. He was getting right back into it. Let's see. They go with that power. 77's pulling for you. Number seven. Watch that hit right there. He just laid the wood on that one. Mauro Garano, 6'2", 310-pound sophomore. Wow, they've got some big young kids in there. And with the strength training for the next two or three years, there are going to be some studs out there. Powell out quick again, trying to get Grover out there. That goes incomplete. Powell, I think he was hit a little bit late. No flag on the play. Gleason on the blitz was in there, number 31 out of Virginia. Here we go. The defensive line now is getting stuffed at the offensive line, which is good in terms for the Colonels now. They're stopping that defensive pressure coming in. Powell, that one just misread, mistimed it. So another third down for Wilkes. They've been very good this afternoon, three of five. Play clock down to five. Just get it off. Here comes the blitz. They set up a little bit of a screen. It goes off to the tight end, Dean. Dean still on his feet. Jason Dean out of Blue Mountain goes in for a Colonel touchdown, 22 yards. What a great call, a tight end screen. They do a great job with the fake in the backfield. Quarterback drops. There's pressure in his face, and they just uh, tuck that ball in. Gronk style there. Well, more <laughs> like Dallas Goddard, I'd say, being an Eagles fan. First touchdown of the year. It's his longest this year as well. His eighth catch overall for the Blue Mountain product his first year. Raza in for the extra point again. Boy, this Wilkes offense is rolling this afternoon when they have the ball. PAT is up and through. Kings score, but Wilkes matches it. It remains a 21-point lead for Wilkes in the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup. Cup 2022. The score right now is 28 Wilkes, Kings College 7. And I'm joined now by Cheryl Ish, the Associate Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics and Recreation at Kings College. Cheryl, how are you doing today? Great, great to be here, Jake. How does it feel to be back at Mayor's Cup? Oh, what, what the excitement. I mean, it's, it's great. Our two schools right down the road from each other. I, it's just a wonderful environment. Absolutely. So I heard recently you guys just finished your third annual Monarch Mayhem event. Talk to us a little bit about that and how it helps raise money for the sports teams. Great, yes. Uh, Monarch Mayhem, third one we just had this past week. It's part of our Monarch Athletic Fund. And it's a 24-hour crowdfunding event where our teams go out and they, they reach out to their alums, their family, their friends in order to solicit funds they need. Um, what's wonderful about it is it, it adds to our student athlete experience. We have teams like our women's basketball team raising funds to go to Florida. Um, our women's hockey team is trying to raise funds to add a shooting room and for so they can practice on campus and it just it's, it's, it's great. Um, we, it was very successful. We raised almost $60,000 in wow. 24 hours. Um, our teams were really creative in how they were engaging with their um, alums and families, and we're just really grateful for the support. Absolutely, and again, like you're saying, what a great way to really reconnect with your alums and really also give that leadership skill to students to have the ability to go out and ask for things like that. You've been in student affairs for quite some time. You know, 
we're coming oh off God. of two years of COVID. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of students at any college really getting out and experiencing opportunities that are on campus. Sure, it's so important. It's important for our students to feel connected to their other classmates and to the campus. And I think that's something that we can be really proud at at Kings that are, are we provide so many opportunities. We have over 500 student athletes, but in addition to that, we have students who are involved in residence life, student government, um, the, the radio, our Cheval Center does a wonderful job with connecting students with community service and service learning. Um, so it's just, it's a, it adds a great layer and of experience and it's something that we can be really proud yes, of. Awesome. Well, Cheryl, thank you so much. Happy Mayor's Cup. Right. Guys, back to you, back up in the booth. <laughs> the question is, can anyone stop Tyler Carey on the kickoff? 93 yards for the Old Forge product. There are only two touchdowns for Kings today. They both come from number 19. Yeah, well, their offensive stats are really going to be low <laughs> because <laughs> when you get a kickoff return like that, two of them, though. So now, right now, here it is. Watch this. Great job blocking, and he just has such great speed and vision, and he cuts it right down their sideline, trying to pump up his own sideline, his own team, and look at him. He wanted to celebrate, but he's like, nope, let me get in first. So, wow, what a way to answer that touchdown from the Colonels and comes right back. Look at this. Another angle, Coach, right at you. Our camera guys are the best in the business, I'll tell you. They give you everything. Look, he's going to look back, try to get one number. Oh, he oh, said number what? two. He was pointing, <laughs> saying he's got his second number of the two. day. Well, Jonathan Drock, I can tell you, on this sideline, Wilkes was not happy. He's looking at the special teams coach. There's going to be some adjustments made. You can't let that happen. Twice on no. two straight kickoffs, <laughs> number 19 just takes it the distance to the house. You, you give and I him, remember him being that fast. <laughs> you give a team, you you're, you have them on the ropes, you, you're knocking them out, getting ready, you give them the haymaker, and what do they do? They come right back on you. So now it's real simple, Bob. And next time they score, the Colonel score, do not kick it to number 19. Absolutely. I might have to call Mike Shoe back and say, was he that <laughs> fast in high school? <laughs> Whitaker tries the answer. So good job by the special teams from the Monarchs. They stop him at the 30. So two touchdowns by Carey. He's given Kings 14 points. They cut the lead in half. Now their defense has to come back out to the Monarchs and maybe and stop this offense, Coach, that is picking up some great numbers this afternoon. Already over 234 yards. King, Kings has run 13 plays total. Wilkes has run 26. And the disparity in the numbers of plays and the yardage, it, it speaks for itself. But right now, uh, Coach Schubeck probably is going to, you know, if we called him right now, he'd say <laughs> he taught him everything he knows. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Duels back in there. Carcio stops him and a bunch of Monarchs. Minimal gain. So now they're just keen on that run. But the pass game has really opened up today for the Colonels, and that's going to open up some more stuff for Jules. It does. It works hand-in-hand. Hand. And you know that the Monarchs came in trying to stop number four, and that's a tall order. And now having Powell back there and being very effective in this passing game, it's really, you know, Kings right now is probably reeling. Their defensive coordinator's head spinning, going, okay, now we got to worry about the pass because they got a good uh, quarterback back. Powell, 10 of 15 on the day, 138 yards, three touchdowns overall. Did have a 45-yard touchdown pass. Back, trying to set up a middle screen. They do. Higgins, the sophomore, with a nice gain. Flags come in late, well downfield. It might be during the play, so this might be a spot foul, so we'll see where they place the ball. The MAC referees today, David Stewart is the white hat. We'll see what, the, what they have to say. I didn't see anything from this side. I, if we something. look at the replay, maybe we'll see something at the end. 10-14 left in the half. Holding. Offense. Number 24. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. So spot foul, Whitaker got called for holding. So this will give him second down and about five. I'm trying to see. There's Jules right there. Right, yep. You see Whitaker down there. He had he grabbed his jersey and then he let up with the hands up. I yeah. didn't do it. The other 24, Sherrod, yeah. saying, those, I got held, I got held, right? They always those, do that. Those two 24s have <laughs> been battling all day. They have Powell back. Has Jules in the flat, decides to pull it down. Nope. Flag comes in. This will be holding, I think, against Wilkes. Goes incomplete. 
So a couple big holding calls now on the Colonels, slowing this drive down. Third penalty down the day for the Colonels. Holding, offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty, second down. This is what Kings wants, trailing by 14. Back the ball up, bring up second down and long. Well, this was called on Garano, the right guard. So, I, I mean, it must have happened right at the onset of the play. Came in pretty quick from the referees behind. So it brings up second and long now again. 15, call it, for the Colonels. Trips come to the near side. 29th play of the game for the Colonels. Has Jules in the flat again. Instead, they're going to go long. Pulled it in. Great catch by Peltzer, the senior. The senior on, with double coverage on him at six foot four. Pulled it in, hauled it into Monarch territory. Wow, in between double coverage, Sherrod and Barber from the Monarchs, and this was just perfect placement. Look at this. He had to come back for the ball, great concentration, and it was just perfect placement. Big play for the Colonels. One of the things that Coach Nar wanted to try to do was limit the big plays, and right now the, the Colonels are killing them with it. 45-yard strike after the two holds, and that's the difference in today's game, I think, is Powell, because he is just, they're playing well on third down. Penalties haven't hurt them, and Powell's playing well. Powell has to pull it in, gets it away outside the tackles. Uh, Peltzer was in there, excuse me, was the receiver downfield they were trying to get to as Kings put the blitz on. They did, and Bob, the dimension he brings back to the offense now is so evident. Look how cool common he is under pressure. He's getting hit, getting tackled, and he still manages to get the ball, throw it out of bounds, so it's not a loss of down. Smart play. Against Delaware Valley this year, Powell was 11 of 31. Had the most yards on the season, 156 touchdown and an interception. Right now, throwing the ball, they have 196 total yards. Oh, over the middle, it's caught! Powell on his back, connects for the touchdown, which Schweizer off, the senior. It's a 33-yard strike. What a play. They really did a great job executing this fake on the inside. Jules does a nice job, they all bid, and he just had two steps on them. And that's Jason Schweizerhoff. And I don't have the roster. Where's, where's he from, Bob? Do you know? I'll find out. You just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> what a great job. I mean, he's 6'1", 190 pounds. His longest this year has been 38 yards, but I think that was probably his sweetest 33-yard touchdown. William Tennant High School. Ah, my old stopping grounds. Razaza, extra point is up and good, and Wilkes starting to pull away 35-14. 8.56 before the half. Here it is. Look at it. Just, he just, Powell just sat back there, waited, and again, the receivers are doing their jobs. They're going to their breaks, getting separation, and again, Schweizerhoff with the touchdown. Sherrod there, number 24, and this secondary is starting to get picked apart by Powell and his teammates. 13 and 19 for 229 yards and four touchdowns for Powell. And I think someone up here in the box has said, if they don't squid this kick, <laughs> and you're right. It you're right. Don't kick in the carry. I'll, let me yell at the window. Yeah. If you're a Wilkes fan. If you're a Kings fan, you're like, I get the carry. Kick it. Get we the want carry. carry. Come on. Or put carry up where number 18 is. Switch them. How happy is Jonathan Trock to have an experienced quarterback in there when his other quarterback, the best in the league, went down, Rodriguez. Well, it's it's just a totally different team today. It just shows how important that next man up mentality can be when you have great athletes. Carry from his eight. Oh. Flipped over by Whitaker, and that lands on his butt at the 30-yard line. So a little bit of a change, putting Nate Whitaker in there, and it pays dividends. Let's take a look at Kings this year, schedule-wise, 8-1 coming in, 7-1 overall. 
And they played very well. I mean, their only loss to Delaware Valley, the perennial power, most likely they'll go to the NCAAs. But Kings, as you mentioned in pregame, Coach, maybe get an NCAA bid, but right now they're losing. Right. they got to win first. They've got to win about this. They can't worry about next week. But the teams they're playing right now, I, I remember when I coached here, Del Val was always good. Lycoming was always a, a big rivalry game. FDU has really been on the upswing the last few years. They used to be like, uh, I hate saying that the doormats, because you could always count on them for a win. Seems like t we haven't seen Tyler Moore in a long time. The offense really hasn't been out here after the carry two touchdown returns. I mean, and you can see that in the time of possession. Wilkes, Kings is only on the ball for seven minutes and 18 seconds coming in. Yeah, well, you get 14 points. <laughs> this is the 14th play of the day. You know, nice pass play right in there. Good connection. To the H-back, Cohen. Had, that's his 93rd catch in his career. Let's see if Kings wants to get something going. Get a, they got to match scores now. Big run in the middle. Ooh, Ellis puts his head down, rolls over somebody, and they move the chains inside Colonel territory. Boy, yards after impact, I'm calling this one. Watch this. <laughs> he puts his shoulder out, boom, and then he goes on for another three yards. Jesse Odesso took the brunt of that. He laid down the ground for about ten, <laughs> five seconds. Like, okay, what just what, happened? What, yeah, Where'd that Mack truck come from? <laughs> I mean, Ellis is 5'10", 250, just a sophomore. He's a big boy, and he can run quick. Look at him out of the backfield. Ramos almost got to him, and Carey catches it. Minimal gain. Nice job by Ramos. So, excuse me, Hess, nice job. Ramos almost got the quarterback. They run that slip screen inside, and he slipped right into uh, Steel, he Steel Hess Rice's grasp right there. I'm sure T Carey's going, uh, Coach, can we run that a little bit wider? <laughs> I mean, what a great name for a defensive tackle. Uh, right? Steel has. Steel has. Steel. Here comes the corner blitz. Trying to get to more. They don't. But no one's down there. Carey in the wrong place. More threw it towards the outside. Carey's more on the inside. But Wilkes brought the pressure. They did. Number five, Adam Piston coming in. The Parkland product, the senior. And... Bob, his last game, he's really done a tremendous job for that defensive line for the Colonels. Nice cool. edge rush coming off of him. So they get the play from the sidelines. Jeff Nahr, uh, it's going to be quite a speech at halftime. Giving up 35 points at least so far in this first quarter. Hard count by Moore. You can see everyone standing on the Wilkes. They want to come after the quarterback. It's a quick in. And it's dropped. He had it. It was in his hands. I think that was Herman. And it's going to be fourth down. Jeff Nahr, what are you going to do? He's going to go for it. But they, what they were doing, the Colonels on that, uh, I used to call that a chaos defense because the offensive line doesn't know what's going on. It's chaos. And those kids, you could see they were stepping up, trying to get them to jump, and then they're going different gaps. So it makes it really difficult for the O-line. So here we go, fourth King, and eight. Kings on the season, 50%, eight of 16 on fourth down. Their first fourth down on the day. They don't want to give the ball back to this powerful Colonel's offense today. Moore back, he has time, still waiting. Flushed, in the hands, he's taken down again by Angel Ramos. Drop for a loss, a one yard loss on that. It's another sack for the Wilkes defense. They were playing a cover two, and I like what they, the Colonels were doing. They went with their safeties in the back playing that cover two. They went two on, three on two with their coverages, a diamond formation. Fourth sack on the day. For the Colonels defense, they stop Kings on fourth down. They have the ball. Seven minutes still remaining in this half, and Wilkes can really blow this one out. They get a touchdown. I mean, I don't want to say that it will be over, but I'll tell you what. When your offense isn't producing, the only points you get are from special teams. There's only going to be so many times that opportunity is going to present itself. Yeah, this high, this offense is rolling at a high caliber this afternoon. Jules, just a yard gain. Time now for the Monarchs defense to step up. Well, they've been on the field a long time. They're going to start getting gassed in a little bit. Good thing halftime's coming up. 
Dallas Solomon, 6'3", 250 pounder from the Hazleton area in his last game for the Monarchs, possibly. Right now, he's doing a nice job up there. He's, his hands and his feet, active pursuit, and he's just a big guy to try to block. Wilkes came, coming in with second in the MAC in total offense. With They averaged 357 per game. Coach, already in the first half, they have 328 total yards. That's <laughs> Tell me exceeded, they don't want yeah. the ball back. They want this trophy back. Blitz comes in. Kings wants to get Powell. Houdini's there today. He gets out of the grasp, and he can't make the play. Flags come in. But how about Xavier Powell? He was surrounded by white jerseys. And he just eluded them somehow, some way. Let's see a great camera work. He goes to his right, goes to his left. Number eight, we talked about Solomon right there. Gets out of his grasp. And again, he just makes something happen. He's coming into, he sees the linebacker coming in his face. Still throws the ball away. Holding. Offense. Number 65. 10-yard penalty. Second down. So a fourth penalty of the day for Wilkes is a holding. This will back them up at second down. But we've seen before, last series, they got a couple penalties, but they still made a first down, got it through the air, and that's the way things are going. When things are going right, momentum's on your side, Coach, hard to uh, get it back, right? It, it makes it real easy to coach, but uh, you're right, and it's an uphill battle to try to get that momentum back. That's like the 12th player that we always talk about, kind of. Big Mo. Yeah. Now we're not talking about Mo Zaleski either. <laughs> How quickly, good job on the defensive side, trying to hit Johnson over there. Nice hit by Sherrod. Goes incomplete, so third and long now. Good job by King's defense. Look at this, he does a great job coming right in, getting that shoulder right in the back of his shoulder pads on the receiver, Johnson, and he just couldn't concentrate to keep that ball in. So they're down again. Wilkes has been very good this afternoon, four of six. And they came in averaging 33% on third down, but they were well above that this afternoon on a beautiful afternoon for football. Powell quick out to Jules. He's got room. White jerseys surround him. He's going to be well short of the first down. Sherrod in there making the tackle along with Gleason. And the punt team coming on for the Colonels. Well, that was a key swing pass right here. He just looks, and look, Jules is looking in. He leads them perfectly, and when you get this young man out in open space like that, he is so dangerous. But the Monarch secondary and linebacker core, nice job wrapping him up, making sure that he doesn't get anywhere near that first down. Orlando in there to punt. Third punt of the afternoon, 38-yard average. DiGregorio back at his 20. What Kings school did he go to? Oh, four. Oh, Kings almost got it. High kick to Gregorio. Fumbles it. Went through his hands, and Wilkes is there. Number 16 on the recovery for the Colonels. Dominguez. Yep, Dominguez. Anthony Dominguez out of Binghamton, New York. Johnny on the spot. Uh, you just see, we talk about technique as coaches. Boy, they made him pay for it anyway with that tough hit in there. His elbows were out. You always tell them, keep your elbows in. Look that ball in. But when you have three guys coming right at you. And if you think, I think if we if we look at it again, you're going to see his eyes come down. And you got your coaches talk about that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. He took his eye off the ball, four jerseys coming at him, and the ball went through it. So big, big play for Kings. They lose the ball. Wilkes back on. This offense already with 35 points up. Jules with a blocker. Big number 65, Rulin, the sophomore, 295 pounds, leading the way. What's scary is for the Colonels, everybody, is that they've got four underclassmen on that big offensive line. They've got a sophomore running back that's number one in the league, and they're just showing how dominant they are right now with their run game. You know who's watching this? Who's Susquehanna. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Susquehanna, <laughs> Keystone. Like Humming, Moravian. Colonels are coming into the landmark. That's going to be quite quite a conference. Susquehanna maybe going to the NCAAs out of, out of their league. 
Out of the Centennial, Kings there on defense. That was James Hunter, number 97 from Penn Argyle, coming up there, 6'2", 220 pounds. Made that first hit on Jewel, right there, and he makes him bounce it outside, and then again, he had nowhere to run. Great pursuit defense by the Monarchs. Hey, this is where Wilkes wants them, third down. I mean, they're killing it on third down today, Coach, <laughs> four of seven. I mean, four you'll take that. Four of seven and, what, two touchdowns, I believe? Yeah, a couple touchdowns on third down, yep. Most teams struggle on third down, just trying to get a first, and the, and the Colonels have gotten two touchdowns. Powell all day, shoots it, in then out of the hands of his intended receiver, Peltzer, but he took a big hit by Carcio in there in the end zone. Good time in here to throw the ball. He's scanning, going through his checks. Boy, he led him right, but look at that hit by number one. Number one on number Car Carcio. one. Carcio, yep. We've called his name a lot out of New Jersey. Puts the big hit on him, and we'll attempt the, we're gonna attempt a field goal now. From the 20, it'll be a 30 yard field goal. Looks like Razaza, the first year kicker. Low snap, the kick is up and it is through. Everything going right for the Colonels. Field goal is good, it completes the drive and they extend this lead now 38-14 in a long first half. No, you don't want to hear this, but not getting a touchdown, that actually keeps Kings in viable for this game. There's a long time to play. We still got the second half to go. I'll tell you what, and the sun's coming out, and it's just a beautiful day for a great day of uh, the closest rivalry football game in the country. So just a four-play, four-yard drive after the fumble by Di Gregorio. Coughed it up. The field goal is up and good. 345 remaining in the 25th annual, 26th annual Mayor's Cup game. And again, if Wilkes wins, They'll improve to 7-3. They have a shot at making a bowl game in the Centennial League. Uh, a couple things have to happen in there. Or they might play an EC AC game next week uh, to be determined where. Correct. But all things determined. Now, if Kings loses, it might drop them down to the third, second, or third coming out. Definitely NCAAs will be off the table if Kings loses. It will be. And, and that's, that's when I was coaching at both these schools, we always wanted to get into the playoffs. First, we wanted to win the MAC. Then we wanted to get into the NCAA playoffs. Fake the reverse to Gregorio from his four. Let's see if he can match carry. He doesn't. He holds on to the ball. Comes past the 20 in the Kings offense. Comes back out, and again, we talked about this offense today, running just total plays today. Coach, not very good so far for the Kings offense. 19 plays, just 59 yards. They have not been on the field all day, just nine minutes in total. And it's give credit to the Colonel's offense, uh, defense as well, excuse me, and they've stopped them on a couple third downs. And, what's, oh, and again, we have to put our college hats on today because they're not going two ways. This isn't like watching offensive line mm -mm. play defensive line. Both these squads, both sides, offense, defense, has a chance to rest. Ellis just keeping his feet going. Stopped a yard out, but then with the power of the sophomore, 250 pounds, he put gets three more yards on that. Does a nice job in there, just grinding those legs out. The offensive line, we're told, we always coach them. You go to the whistle, you can see number 60 in there, still blocking, 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 trying to make sure his running back has a lane to run in. And he, boy, what is that, seven yards he got? Yeah, big drive here, inside handoff to Haley. Haley with a big hit, brushes that off, gets out of bounds. Gain of almost 10 and moves the chains. Good run there. Now Kings will get the ball to begin the third quarter. We'll take a I look like at this play. Again. Boy, they start rolling left, and the running back takes two steps and cuts back to his right, 32. You see him. Boy, he slips off, and he lost his balance, and he regained it. Another first down for the Monarchs. Keep this drive alive. Try to punch one in before half. Penwood product, Mike, nice gain there. As I was going to say, Kings wants to go one for one here. Score here get the ball to begin the third quarter, and they're right back in the game. So far, so good. Ellis bounces to the outside, inside Colonel territory. 
Well, this now we're starting to see the Monarchs are like, okay, we're down, we're not out, we're going to keep grinding. And this is what I talk about grinding. Look at this. He's just running, running, and all of a sudden he's getting to the sideline. He dips his shoulder. He knows he was going to get some contact. But again, this is such a physical game, and these two teams, at this point, they don't care too much for each other. Nope, 21 yard gain. Clock rolling, plenty of timeouts. Rush coming from the backside. Moore gets rid of it. He gets hit to the end zone. No one there. But Tyler Moore got crushed back there. He gets up, but the blitz was on for the Colonels. No flags down. You're going to see number one coming in off the edge. He came from his defensive back position on that backside blitz, and actually he bumped into his own man as opposed to the quarterback. Yeah. It was the sandwich could have been really fatal, but he avoided that hit, big time hit. So more back up. Clock is stopped. Two oh five remaining. Three timeouts left for the Monarchs. They've been in Colonel territory a couple times today, but have not been able to score on offense. Four-man rush. Quick hitter on the inside. Good catch by Joe Herman out of Whitehall. It's another first down. Chains will move. Clock will stop momentarily. King's going to get the play. Fifteen yard gain, here comes Kings. Number one pass offense in the MAC. Ellis breaks a couple of tackles. Good powerful run. Clock will keep rolling. He's about the 20 yard line. 21. 90 seconds left in the half. He picks up six yards on that. And that's he's just such a tough runner. I love the way his style is. King's got to get moving, though. I know they have three timeouts. You don't want to use them yet, right? I, I, you know, why not? I mean, a minute and 20, it's to your advantage. Use it, settle your guys down, and, and just, you know, make sure you got the right play dialed up. From the 21. They're throwing a blitz at him. Over the middle, it's caught by Carey off the ground. They're going to say it's complete. They do. Chains moves, clock stop. They're at the eight. Nice strike by Moore. That was great job by Carey on the concentration. Look at that. In front of him, low, he dives two hands, made sure that he the ball never touched the ground. Good concentration, good strike for the Monarchs. Good camera work by John Gumble on that field there. So knocking on the door, first and goal for Kings. Again, they get the ball to begin the second half. Blitz again. Moore steps up. Moore still on his feet, takes a big hit at the five. Call it the six. And Coach Nar, timeout. 27 ticks left. Well, that's what we need. Good job on the secondary coverage there. Nowhere for his receivers to throw to. Heads up play, gets down smartly, has the ball covered up so it doesn't pop out. And went head first instead of feet first. Correct. <laughs> took, a, took a pop but got back up. So. Second and goal from the six. I think you have to throw, right? Because that stops the If you throw a run in, well, you have a timeout. Yeah, you have they still have timeouts. timeouts. So let's see the, a draw play. What are you calling here? I kind of like that cutback play where they rolled him to the left and running back went to the back to the right side. And with Ellis in there, uh, he's such a power back, you know, running ISO play in there too. They've got the big guys up front. Right Carlos now. have been dialing up the blitz the last couple of plays for this defense. So if, if anything, you want to get a fuel out of here. I know you're down 38-14, but you've got to get points going into, mm -hmm. the, into, the, into the locker room. You get the ball to begin with some momentum now going into the third quarter. You try to get uh, Big Mo back onto your side, as we talked about mm -hmm. earlier, but this would be key. And then there's going to be a dogfight in the second half. Absolutely. If they get this and then if they come out, again, they're going to be focused. They know what they have to improve upon, special teams, okay, and stop the big play. Second goal from the eight. Moore back, tipped at the line of scrimmage. 
I didn't see you got a hand on it, but Ramos was on that side, Redmond as well. I think Jesse Adesso came in off of that. Yep, number one. Good eyes, great eyes, well, coach. Yeah, I, <laughs> when you when you see this big flash coming in yellow, again, he's done that coming off the edge from his defensive back position. 0 for 3 today, Kings on third down, 27 ticks left. They don't get a touchdown here. Coach Nar probably a timeout. Have to discuss field goal or touchdown. Moore back. Blitz on. No flag. There is a flag. It's tipped and it might be a holding call. Steele Hess gazing over Tyler Moore after the play. Holding. It is. Offense, number 57. 10-yard penalty, third down. Yep, Gabe, Gabe Fatizia on this one gets, he was one, oh yeah, you just see right there, he just had number five right there by his jersey. And part of that is, again, we take, as, as an offensive line coach, you tell the guys, yeah, there's holding every play, but when your arm gets extended, let go, and he didn't, he didn't let go on that one. Absolutely, so this backs the ball up now. Let's tee it up at the uh, 16, third and goal. So you have to go for the end zone, or, or you get, ha get part of it back and go for it on fourth down. I mean, it's gonna depend on the play <laughs> call here, right? I think a nice tight end screen maybe, or a tight end pop pass, but they're actually with tight end pop, that's covered pr uh, pretty much. Carry in motion. Moore going to roll to the right. No one open. Comes back to the inside player. That might have been Cohen. It was. Cohen mm -hmm. picks up minimal, probably only just five yards to about the 11. And make it the 12. So not much gain there. And I think now your decision's made. Roll again. There's a lot of pressure again coming from the defensive end. So on fourth down and goal, they're going to bring out the field goal team. For Skevich in there, he's 5 of 12 on the season, has a long of 42 yards. This will be a 39-yarder for Kings. 12 ticks before the half. A timeout called by the Colonels. Coming up at the half, Jake Sarwar is back. Underneath the tent here at Wilkes on a beautiful afternoon. He'll talk to both college presidents. Always good to see them here enjoying this game. A very friendly conversation, I'm sure. Oh, it is. Friendly conversation between the two presidents. So Jake will have that. Jan and I will be back in the booth. If we don't get hit by the ladder <laughs> um, behind us. Uh, <laughs> Coach McKenna wanted out. Yeah. Um, and then Jan and I will be back in the booth. Uh, with some highlights, and there are plenty of highlights here in the first half, most of them by the home team. Great yards, 340 total yards today, 37 plays from Wilkes. Time of possession, 17 minutes overall, and boy, what an afternoon if you're a Colonel fan here at home. And it's, it's just a beautiful day to be outside in November, mid-November. Uh, this is awesome weather. And Bobby, you said about the Kings, or, or the presidents of both schools talking, they've done such a great job trying to revitalize downtown Wilkes-Barre. Absolutely. And they work in conjunction, mm -hmm. except for this game. <laughs> you know, This is where they, they may not be so cordial, but as soon as the, the final, uh, the official, the, the game's over, they go right back to doing what's best for this students and the community. So far, the Battle of Wilkes-Barre is down on South Franklin Street. For Scavage. Kick is good. I think it was blocked. It was. The outside guy got him. It might have been Adesso or Washington. When things are going your way, if you're a Colonel fan, things are going your way. Couple of guys in there. Number 15, 15, I believe. I mean, there were two of them in there, but I think 15's the one that actually got the first hit on it. We have two 15s with Belichick and Holcomb, so we'll have to check on that. Yep, 
that was uh, we just have to determine which 15 because the Colonels and the Monarchs both have double numbers and we're not sure who like when yeah. they're special teams players we're not sure which one it is and that will do it what a half of football here the 26th annual Mayor's Cup if you're a Wilkes University fan lost last week 28 to nothing today you put up 35 on the board and you lead your rivals at the half, baby. At the half, 38 to 14. Jan and I are going to catch our breath. Jaco Sarwar takes over on the other side with both presidents. Stay tuned. We're going to have a second half that's going to be memorable. I got a feeling. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup, sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. Welcome back to the 2022 Mayor's Cup. It is halftime. The score currently right now is 38 for the Wilkes University Colonels and 14 for the King's College Monarchs. But I'm joined right now by Father Tom Looney, the 10th president of King's College. Father Tom, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Jake. Great to be here with you. Absolutely. So, Father, I heard recently, you know, this, the college actually created a new program called El Leo to help students financially. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Sure. You know, in 1946, when the priests and brothers came from the University of Notre Dame to found King's College, the reason was to provide access to students who did did not have that opportunity for academic excellence in the Catholic tradition. And the LEO program is an extension of that mission. So if a family's income is less than $50,000 a year, the LEO program will enable that student virtually to come to King's with their all of their expenses, tuition and fees taken care of. So with a Pell Grant, a FIA Grant, with the, with the uh, scholarship that we give come King's, with a small, very small loan, a student can able to come to King's with all of their expenses taken care of. For. We also have other things like a presidential hope fund that provides textbooks for students who might not be able to afford them. So it's a wonderful package for students who have who come from families who learn less than fifty thousand dollars to get a phenomenal education at King's College. Sure. So you know, I know you're talking about some of your programs. You do have an engineering program, and I hear recently it's become ABET accredited. Talk right. to me a little bit more about the importance of that and what that means for a student. You know, to have that on their degree as well. Sure. When a college gets the gold stamp of approval from an agency that oversees programs, that is a phenomenal thing. And so we just got ABET accreditation for our engineering programs in civil and mechanical engineering. That's the gold standard that agencies say the college has a phenomenal program. It's excellent standards. If you graduate from King's College with a degree in civil and mechanical engineering, you're going to get a great job, you're going to have phenomenal opportunities. We have a state-of-the-art program in our Mulligan Education Center building. It's a phenomenal opportunity for students to get a great degree in engineering to move forward with great prospects for their future. Now, Father, if you take a ride around Public Square in downtown Wilkes-Barre, which is just walking distance, part of your campus is down there, mm -hmm. you'll see, you know, the Alley Center for Health Sciences, but then I also notice the buying of the Times Leader building down there. I hear you guys are adding the Doctorate of Occupational Therapy. That'll be your first doctorate program? Absolutely. It'll be the first doctoral program at King's in occupational therapy. And occupational therapy helps people with the skills of daily living. And in our community, we know with an elderly population, we know that there's absolutely fabulous career opportunities for students who would come to us for this doctoral program in occupational therapy. And it's also part of our commitment to the restoration and building up of downtown Wilkesbury. As you know, the Ramada Hotel was transformed into the Alley Center. The Presbyterian Church transformed into the Chapel of Christ the King. The, the former Springbrook building turned into the Mulligan Center, and now the former Times Leader building turned into the Center for Occupational Therapy. It'll be a state-of-the-art facility with amazing opportunities for our students. Sure. Father, before I let you go, I mean, it seems like there's a lot going on at King's now, especially. So talk to me a little bit more. Are there any other improvements going on around campus? You know, will we see different buildings change, anything like that? Sure. Right now, we're looking at changing our present library into a student success center. The importance of a one-stop shop for students who are looking for academic support services is so deeply important in the context of higher education today. We want to transform that library building into the state-of-the-art state, art, state -of -the -art building for a library in the 21st century and also to provide our students with that opportunity to come and get advisement, tutoring services, all kinds of mentoring in that one spot, one-stop shop to help them to be as successful as they can be. Sure. Father Tom, thank you so much for being here. We'll be right back with the Wilkes University president.
And welcome back to halftime of the 2022 Mayor's Cup. The score right now is 38 for Wilkes and 14 for the King's College Monarchs. I'm joined now by Dr. Greg Kant, the president of Wilkes University. Dr. Kant, how are you doing today? Great, thank you. It's fantastic to be here. Awesome. So you have over 30 years of higher ed education experience. You've been the, you're the seventh president now of Wilkes. Talk to me a little bit more about some new programs you guys developed for this academic year. So we've been launching programs now for lots of years in critical areas around civil engineering, for example, the last year or so. But this year we've put together a unique program that no one else is offering in our region, uh, focused on the industry of cannabis. And it brings together uh, chemistry, pharmaceutical sciences, and really looks at that industry, which is important both in the Commonwealth and around the country. We have both an undergraduate degree and a certificate program in pharmaceutical chemistry. Awesome. So talk to me then a little bit, you know, we're coming basically to the end of the fall semester. Um, again, another one in person for a lot of schools across the country. Talk to me about some recent improvements you guys are making around campus. So we've made lots of improvements to our physical infrastructure. Some of them include actually to the pharmacy program I mentioned before, a, a multi-million dollar uh, improvement to what's their Stark Learning Center is the largest building on campus. And that adds lots of capacity to that program. We've also added two new robotics labs in our engineering program, uh, as well as improvements, just got a new uh, funding from the Commonwealth that'll allow us to put uh, accessibility and large improvements to the Dorothy Dixon Dart uh, Performing Arts Centre, along with other improvements in, our, uh, in the streetscape, just generally around campus, big improvements to the experience for our students. Sure, absolutely. It sounds like you guys have a lot going on this semester. Talk to me, you know, I know you mentioned the Dart Center. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, just exciting events that are happening for the campus, but especially your students. So we have lot, we bring in lots of speakers. So we have some tremendous speaker series, some which are, are focused to bring in for the broader community. And so on a regular basis, there's someone of note, whether it's uh, bringing in a prof one of the leading historians and professors from Harvard University to talk about changes in our political environment. We bring in specialists across the sciences. The business program routinely brings in people who are then open conversations so that members, not just of our community, both our students, our faculty and staff, but the broader Wilkesbury and our community get along to hear people who are shaping the future for us. Sure, absolutely. And before I let you go, let me know, you know, in the next semester, the next few years, you know, what's your goal, what's your plan for Wilkes University? It's interesting. I, of course, heard, um, um, you know, our colleagues down the road talking about what we're doing for libraries. And that kind of change actually is others, us and others are looking at really reimagining the student experience. Sure. At the end of the day, what our basic promise is the opportunities we give to students. So we talk about that in our, our, essentially our slogan, at Wilkes you will. So we're then ensuring that the experiences that our students get, whether it's the way they interact with data and information through a new reimagined library, whether it's all the layers of service that make sure they get a chance to thrive. So all those new endeavours are about improving the quality of the academic experience, making sure that as you live on campus, you get things that change your life. Sure. And what's unique to Wilkes is over 60% of our students are actually graduate students. So we have over 3,000 graduate wow. students around the country and around the world. So we're quite a big player in that non-residential distance learning sure. environment, including over 1,700 graduate nursing students. Awesome. Well, Dr. Kent, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the game. We'll be right back with more of the Mayor's Cup in just a little bit. Thank you. The crowd enjoying a beautiful November day for college football. Wilkes off by 24 over the rivals from King's College in the 26th annual Mayor's Cup. Bob I, Jan Sichak, we're back in the booth. Teams not yet on the field, they will be momentarily. And it's been the, the day of the Wilkes offense, Coach. We'll look at the stats in a minute, but we'll, we'll tell you, 339 total yards, 38 plays overall. Boy, the Colonels have really put it together this afternoon. Having your quarterback back really adds a huge amount of uh, dimension to this offense. He's getting it done in the air, which they couldn't do anything last week with uh, their fourth string quarterback. And this game means so much to both teams in terms of playoffs. And right now, Wilkes is like making a very strong point why they should be in there. Kings having a 
great season under Jeff Nars, 13th year. It's the most wins in his career here at Kings, but a loss today will drop them down. Most likely they will get a MAC Centennial Bowl berth a week from now, who they play to be determined, but this is also good for Wilkes. They could get a berth as well with a couple of uh, losses from some other teams. Yeah, when you start doing the what-if things, yeah. but Bob, you had mentioned earlier that they're going to a new conference next year. Landmark. The Landmark Conference, and they're putting those teams on notice right now. You mentioned that with how well they're playing and how young this team is. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the highlights, and there are a lot from the first half, mostly Kings, uh, excuse me, mostly Wilkes. Here we go. Roll the package. Here we go. Pow. First connection. Great catch. 16-yard pass right in the backfield. I mean, Higgins uh, does a great job with there. Now, who do we get? Their number one running back in the league right now. 68-yard run. He could go all the way. Spoiler alert, he's in there, baby. Nice job. Just when you thought it was over, that he's only at one dimension as in terms of running. Watch this. Nice swing pass. Tucks that ball in. Great block on the outside and in the inside for their third touchdown to the game. Now, just when you thought they were down and out, Old Forge native, Carey comes up here. He goes 87 yards on the kick return. Press Cabbage does a nice job with the extra point kick. Gets them back into the game. But Wilkes comes right back now. Dean, 22-yard pass catch. As I said, remind me of Dallas Goddard for the Eagles right there with that tight end screen. Okay, just when you thought, okay, they're out. Guess who comes back for Old Forge proud? Right there, again, carry this time, 93 yards. Not his longest, <laughs> but still, keeps the Monarchs in the game. And they come back right now. Schweitzerhoff right now, 33-yard pass for another touchdown. And to end it, we end up, oh, okay, we don't, we're not going to see that. The field goal there at the end. By Razaza, 30 yards for Wilkes, and that's made it 38-14. to 14. Wilkes coming down as a team down from the Munson Fieldhouse in Unity. They take the field. Let's take a look at the stats now, and as you might expect, dominated, and I mean dominated, by the Wilkes University Colonels overall. <laughs> 237 to 77 in passing. They couldn't do anything last week uh, against Stevenson. Wilkes couldn't, but boy, having their quarterback back helps. 102 yards rushing versus 58. Last week, would, uh, we saw Wilkes only had 48 yards total offense. No, that was so, just passing. That was just passing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Turnovers have been a key, though, for Kings. They've had two turnovers, and they've actually converted to points for the Colonels. And the time and the plays versus the yards, you can see that, everybody. You know, they're doing a tremendous job, the Colonels are. Now, how is Kings going to respond? They get the ball to start the second half, and we're going to see what Coach Nor and his staff drew up at halftime to get them back into this game. The, what we didn't see in there was the block punt field goal. Block field goal by Kings almost towards the end of the half, six, second, six seconds left in the half. It was blocked. That did not give Kings any points, didn't give them momentum, gave more momentum back to Wilkes. And they've had Big Mo all first half. They have, and and the 12th player, is he's been huge for the Colonels today. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. And, and that was, I think it was 15, was yep. the one that got his hand on it. It was Holcomb, Holcomb. I believe it was. Yep. yep, did a nice job with that. Uh, they're just swarming to the ball. They just seem like they really want this game a little bit more than the Monarchs at this point. Go inside the numbers a little bit, Coach. 11 first downs to eight for Wilkes, but it's really been third down efficiency that has helped the Colonels. Four of eight on the day. Kings just 0 and 4. Time of possession, as you might expect, 17 minutes for Wilkes and 12 for Kings. And that third down possession, of those four downs that the Colonels have converted, two of them have been touchdowns, which – you're thinking, well, if we could just get a first down, keep the drive alive. But they've really have capitalized and done a nice job. Both teams now on the field. The clock is set for the third quarter. Kings gets the ball, as I said, need points in this one, and they go from there. I mean, you'll see a lot of different things maybe from Jeff Nard, some trick plays, some onside kicks, anything to get back in this game because they want to be the number one seed coming out in the bowl game and tell the NCAA tournament committee, for Division Three, hey, we came back. We're still winners. We have our ninth win on the year. And you can't deny us, and that's what it's going to come down to. You cannot deny us that bid uh, position because we've earned it, especially if they can come back and beat the Colonels right now. And I'm sure right now Coach uh, Drack is saying, please, whoever special teams coaches, <laughs> kicker, do not, not kick to who? 
<laughs> I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say in the history of this game, 33rd me 35th meeting, there has not been two touchdown returns in one game. Not of 87 and 93 yards. So. And not by the same no, player. No, not know. by the same yeah. player. So we are ready to go for the third quarter. 24-point lead for the home team trying to get that Mayor's Cup trophy back for the first time since 2019. Jake Sarwar will be back with us with some more interviews in this half as well. There's the Mayor's Cup, what they're battling for. And on each side, there's a little placard engraved with the score and the year, obviously, of the winner of each one. So the kick is up. It is deep by Shire. Tyler Carey has it. They take him down. They find a way to get him at the 25. And here comes this offense. Again, only 135 total yards on the day coming in. Coach, as we know, number, number one passing team in the league. Number three overall in total offense. But the Colonel's defense has held them in check. And that defensive line has been putting so much pressure on, along with blanket coverage by the Colonel's secondary. It's been really tough for them to find that number one offense going. Hey, let's give credit to the Colonel's defense. Four sacks on the day as well, and Tyler Moore, and some big ones as well. So Moore back next to him looks like it is Ellis. Nope, it's Haley. Haley with the ball. Nowhere to go. And the defense comes out strong. Piston out of Parkland makes the tackle for a loss. And the relentless pursuit by Angel oh, Ramos, number four, another defensive lineman, making sure that there's no running lanes available for any of the Monarchs. You'll see they go. I, what I was tr looking at, they were trying to do like a little cross buck action in there, number nine, coming into our screen. They give the ball, and he's going away from us. And the Colonels were not fooled by it at all. Haley only averaging three yards per carry, and no, Coach Nard just tried his, to keep that running game going, but I think they have to go to the air as much as possible. Especially when you have a grad guy in there who's five-year starter. And it's picked off by the Colonels. Devon James, and he is in for a Wilkes touchdown. That's an interception. Oh my! Davon James, 5'11", 185 pound, sophomore. That's what I'm saying, How the youth of the Colonels. Look at this play, he's got time. He just steps right into it. He was trying to go to De Gregorio on that, and it, Davon just did a great job stepping up in there. And he stayed in bounds by the hair of his shoe. His first interception, his first touchdown, a pick six. For the Colonels. How do you stop the number one offense in passing? Pick the ball off and turn it in for six points. And the point is good. 45-14. Just a minute four into this third quarter. And it's the Boiling Springs product doing the work. Good concentration, look the ball in, two hands. Let's see that sideline. Oh, great job with our camera. Is that Jonathan Gumbel again there? Gumbel and the guys upstairs did a great uh, job. These... Saw he just got his foot in bounds and he dove for the end zone and things are railing on the Monarch sideline. Remember last year over a McCarthy was mostly all Kings. Oh, Wilkes has turned the tables here at home. Well, I remember when I was coaching with Coach Sheptock, I was a defensive line coach for the Colonels, and we went over to McCarthy Field, and we got beat 27 nothing. And Coach, Coach Sheptock had T-shirts made up with us for everybody, and they had 27 nothing on the sleeve. As a reminder, Work your backsides off in the offseason, and let's not have that happen again. Officially, the James pick six, 32 yards. And the sideline on our side is going nuts. Squib kick picked up by one of the up guys. Good job by Wilkes to finally decide not to get it to carry. Kings comes back out Number 23, at the 39. With the 
Yeah. If you're Coach Nar, now what are you doing? Well, we do what we do best. Let's go back to our pass game. We've tried to establish the run with not much success, but we know we can pass the ball because we got an experienced quarterback. It's going to be a Monarch first and 10 on their old 39. So the ball at the 39. And the struggling offense continues. Back on the field, Coach. I mean, they just seven points from the offense last week in the 14-0 win over Misericordia. No points today so far. All special teams. Well. <laughs> and something, and Colonels have found something. Ellis, positive play past the 43. Number 29. Holcomb comes in from his linebacker spot to make that first hit. Number 73 right now is getting up. That's Nate McGloin. You'll see right in here. Nice job. 15 comes in, makes the first hit. I'm trying to see where the... Hess and Ramos as well in there. Mostly Hess out of the Whitehall. A lot of Lehigh products on this defensive line. Moore did not have his first target. Has to go down to the secondary one. Tries to hit Ellis in the flat. Goes off his hand. You saw Moore not even take a drop. He was trying to go to this left side quick. He was. He knew where he wanted to go, and he was going through his progressions. But it, he had a little bit of time. But this is what they're doing. You see number five in your screen right now. He keeps getting in the quarterback's face. And Moore, we said earlier with his interceptions, if you saw that last pass, that's where they've come from. He throws the ball hard, tips off the receiver into a D-back's hand. Rolling more, they pick up a first down, hit Herman out there, I think, on the far side. Herman makes the catch, they'll move the chains. Kings has moved the ball, we'll see you this one again. But then they just sign a self-destruct and make mistakes. And this is where they can be deadly. If they're just going to start doing just short passes and they're getting, well, they got a first down, they got 12 yards on that one, they're going to get down the field in a hurry. So I, this game is by no means over at this point. Ellis right through the middle. Up past the 44-yard line inside Colonel Territory. Uh, we've been here before for Kings that just haven't converted. David Osmond with the they, go with that, they go with the inside zone. You can see they're mugged up. Number 60 there, Zachary Taron Wimmer and Gabe Fatizzi in there. They're just mugging. They grab, they drop their back, their right foot to turn and just get open up a running lane. Four-man rush tipped at the line of scrimmage. That was number seven for the Colonels on that tip that time. We're going to see who that is because he's just a, actually he came off the bench. Billy Costner. Okay, senior defensive lineman. Under Colonel 43. So again, third down, one for five on the day are the Monarchs. No blitz, three man rush. Quick hitter to Gorio. He's got a first down past the 35. Pass Gain of complete. seven. Number 22, Michael Gregorio. Oh, this is when it's going to count in here. Nice job. He just comes in right there Marshall on, the on a post pattern in there, and he just stopped because if he kept going, he would have gone right into number down, two of the Colonels, and they didn't want to do that. 31 catches on the year for D. Gregorio out of Old Forge, and no running room at all Ellis for yeah. Ellis. A host of gold jerseys there. Including Piston, playing his last game. We see number one, number five, and 15 getting in there, getting some of that. Brandon Holcomb again, the senior from Boca Raton, Florida, all the way up here. Who knew? Tried to fake it. They did Cohen out of the halfback position. Positive yardage. Gained a nine. Brings him third and short. To number nine, Brandon Cohen. I like Coach Norris uh, on this. Is He's going with a lot of misdirection on this. Three, going one Mark way, Mark turning Cohen back, and throwing opposite. Trying to make something third happen. Again, now they're in third and two, third and short. 95th catch for the Conwell Egan product, Cohen, in his career. His last game in a Kings uniform, his team trailing by 20, 
34. Big hole for Haley. Move the chains again. So King's putting a nice drive together. Haley with the run. It's enough for a first down for the Monarchs. Steel Hess ends up getting in here. He gets driven back. He's double teamed. Look, he's fighting off the double team, and he still gets downfield, trying to make sure that, okay, look at that, making sure number 12's in there. They're doing a good job. The secondary John Washington from Brooklyn, New York. Blitz escaped is Haley. Wow, great and job. And Haley's still on his feet, still going to the 10. He didn't get the memo that, that the Colonels may have think that the game's over. No, that young not man, at all. He is, boy. Penwood product with a nice game. Look at this. He zigs, he zags, he breaks it one tackle. Comes in, shrugs off one, hits another one. He's the one that, look at him, he just, that's a great, great effort right there. And what the Monarchs have been coached to do, these kids. If you're second in the secondary, you hate seeing him coming at you. <laughs> Blitz, good pickup in the backfield. Moore looking, surveying. Finds a guy inside the 10. That's Cohen again, the halfback. And it is first and goal, Kings. Look at this. He just scrambles out to his left, and he threw that ball on like a dart right there. Right in there. Great job by Cohen to concentrate, get that in there. The six foot, 210 pound senior. Well, we'll mention more against Lev Val this year 315 yards and four touchdowns, both career highs. They could use an outing like that today, but they trail in this one big. More quick step, quick in, dropped. That ball was down by his knees coming back in. That's tough. That was Herman on there trying to make that reception. Number 13, Herman. You could he see had that, it, though. Yeah, he did. He was in good position to get that. Second and goal for the Monarchs. Second and goal. We saw this at the end of the first half. They were unable to score, and then the field goal was blocked by the Colonels. The offense has not scored today. Ellis, the 250-pounder inside the five, at to the five, I should say, third and goal. Number 29. No Ellis. questions here. You're going for a touchdown. There's no field goals in this uh, yeah, Three points is nice, but watch this motion in there. Nub formation with that tight end uh, coming back goal. in motion kick out the defensive end and he so tucks it up five. inside. Well, this defensive line has really played well today for Wilkes. Trying to make the stop here. Kings wants to get on the board. Quick again out. Great move and no one there. Ton of gold jerseys in the way. Great catch out there by Haley. But it was Marshall who made the first hit in the backfield. You'll see this, and he just spins it to the inside. Oh, and then it keeps going. Number two has him, but again, he didn't have the leverage of him. And what a great job, great effort. I'll tell you what. Leroy Marshall is a two-time MAC Defensive Player of the Week and a first-year player. So fourth and goal from the four. Moore, back to the tight end who slips out, touchdown Kings. Ryan McComb slipped out and he was wide open. What a play call. Kings finally gets on the board on the offensive side. Well, there was a lot to that play. I mean, they lined up, then they motioned, and then they changed the formation. Great call, great play, I love it. For Scavich on for the PAT as Kings cuts into the lead, 740 left. The kick is up and through. For Scavich's extra point is good. So the drives Your Wilkes -Colonel, gets 45, a touchdown. Kings 21. We'll take a break. It was a 15 play, 61 yard drive. Kings with the first offensive touchdown of the afternoon. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup, sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. 
And welcome back to the 2022 Mayor's Cup. The score right now is 45 for the Wilkes University Colonels and 21 just after a touchdown for the Kings College Monarchs. But I'm joined right now by a senior at Wilkes University, Ariel Reed. Ariel, how you doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. So I hear that you're a double business major, mass comm, you have a minor in econ, but you also just got a really awesome job offer down in Texas. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I just signed my TV contract for KFDX out of Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, there I'll be an MMJ reporter, and I will be covering a little bit of that Red River rivalry down uh, there, but primarily focused in news. That's awesome. How exciting, especially right after college, to have an opportunity yeah. like that. Yeah, it's, it's nice just to exhale. I mean, I've been so busy these past four years, and just to be able to know that, hey, in six months when I graduate, I have a job lined up. I'm I'm just chilling. I'm, sure. I'm in, like, cruise control now <laughs> to the finish. Line. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about, you know, so much going on these last four years. You're very busy on campus. You hold a lot of different offices. You work for different places on campus. Tell me a little bit of how Wilkes has kind of prepared you to take this next step. I mean, Wilkes has really allowed me to become a true jack of all trades. I mean, I got my start in newspaper, so I have a background in news writing. Uh, had a bunch of radio experience, so I got have great uh I don't know, technical experience with sure, audio yeah. editing, that sort of stuff. Same with TV. I mean, I've had hands-on hands experience uh, with some of the best equipment for the past four years. It's been it's been awesome. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, it's needed, right? Especially in the field. Yes. Um, Ariel, you know, tell me, what's a piece of advice you'd have for that high school student that thinks, you know, that'd be really cool. I'd like to be a reporter. They see this and say, I'd like mm -hmm. to do exactly what she's doing. You know, what's a piece of advice you'd give them? I'd say go all in on plan A. Like, don't have a plan B. Like, you, you really got to go two feet in the door, fully committed, do everything you can, and just go for it. And you'll end up in a spot like this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, Ariel, thank you so much. I'm sure we'll be seeing you very soon on our TVs at some point as well, too. Absolutely. Guys, back to you up in the booth. Well, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, congratulations getting a job right out of school. That's awesome. Now, if my daughter could do that, that'd be great, too. No well, plug there. <laughs> <laughs> no plug there, but great job. Uh, two reporters. Jake's done a nice job, too, coming over, living his dream as a reporter, doing an awesome job in our Fox 56 News first at 10. So what a flag down. What against the Monarchs. Uh, so the Colonels have the ball on offense right up at their own 44-yard line to begin this drive after Kings march down the field. Let's see how the Colonels respond with this. Oh. Powell. Quick hitter to Peltzer over the middle. Gain of five. Make it six or seven. Seven. Pass complete to nice one. fake in there. Three and three. just when I, I was just thinking they're just going to run the ball, they're going to grind it out. What do they do? They're going to continue working that passing game to make sure that they stay balanced. Seven is the Colonel's second and third on the Monarch 49. Well, now the Kings defense needs to come up and stop this powerful offense today. That have put up 45 points with Xavier Powell, the junior from Poughkeepsie, leading the way. He's going to carry. Powell, gain of eight. First down, move the chains inside Monarch Powell territory. Well, I don't know what his injury status was or what happened to him, but he looks right. pretty strong yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, he does. Looks real healthy. If that's 80%, you'll take it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. He, I mean, he's really done a great job orchestrating this offense today, coming back after a couple weeks uh, off, you know, coming off the injured reserve list, and he's really taking control of this game. He's thrown for 244 yards, has four touchdowns. Jules picks up one more yard, he'll have 100 on the day again. Go to the air again. Outside to the senior Whitaker. Still on his feet, Nate Whitaker in his last game in a Colonel uniform. Wants a touchdown and he will get it. What an effort from Nate Powell's Whitaker. 43 yard Whitaker. Colonel score. Complete for a Colonel touchdown. This is what we talk about. You play to the whistle. Good ball, good route. Look at this. Just when you thought he's down, he keeps his balance and he cuts back inside. Look at that speed and burst. And a nice job to get that much wanted touchdown on your last home game as a, as a football player for the Colonels. He came in fifth in the league in receptions, add another, and add his 14th career touchdown to Whitaker's resume here with the Colonels. Rosas' kick is up and good. 51 on the board for Wilkes. They're on their way to getting that cup back. We'll be right back to the Mayor's Cup.
We're back on the kickoff. Tyler Carey already with two touchdown returns. Uh, Wilkes doing a nice job on special teams making that. The Wilkes scored 76 years ago in this game, 51, 52 on the board. We're just uh, six minutes left in the third quarter. And now things have unraveled for this Monarch team that came in second in the MAC overall with an 8-1 and one record. Well, they, the Colonels out must have studied a lot of film and really the momentum that they wanted to gain from tonight's game to get to show that the Centennial Conference, look, we want to play, be in an ACAC game. Let's do this. And they're really playing for a lot of pride, a lot of heart, and showing everybody that this young Colonel team is going to be a team to be reckoned with. Comes the blitz again. They set up a middle screen. They get it to Ellis, and Ellis is cut down near the 30, gain of eight. Leroy Marshall, number three, came up, and he just does a nice job sniffing this out. Great job. You see those offensive line. Look at him. They're coming downfield, but he came off the stock block and blew it up, did a nice job. Right now, the Monarchs are scratching their head trying to figure out what do we have to do to keep this game and keep going. First out. There was a flag on the play, roughing the passer called against Wilkes. So that will give the Monarchs 15 more yards and put the ball at the 42 of Kings. As the Monarchs offense back on the field. They've run 46 plays today for 194 yards. Four-man rush, more pressure comes. He gets it almost picked off, off the hands of DiGregorio. Goes incomplete. But great coverage by the Colonels in the secondary there. I mean, Moore's getting a little bit of time, but look at the pressure. I, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with Adam Piston out there. He just keeps putting that pressure on, keeps his feet and arms active, and just flushing them out. Well, right now he's on the ground in front of us. Uh, got a cramp on that, did the Parkland product. Number five. Moore going to roll into the flat to Cohen. Right near the 50 is going to be taken down. Not much room there for the Colonels, or excuse me, for the Monarchs offense, Coach. No, there's not. I'm looking at Coach Nor was just talking to the official about something. Well, there's a lot of jarring down there. I mean, Wilkes hasn't won since 2019. They skipped 2020. Last year, Kings kind of put them on them over at McCarthy, and now they're returning the favor here. So there's a, definitely a lot of trash talk <laughs> down on the field between schools that are a block apart. So the referees want to get a hold of this. Keep it don't, in check. Yeah. Yep. You don't want to get thrown out because these two teams might play next week. Kings definitely. Wilkes maybe. Right? You, are correct. you want to play next week again. You don't want this to be your last game and how you go out. After the play was over, <laughs> unsportsmanlike conduct, Wilkes, number 11. 15 yard penalty. First out. This is Wilkes, number 11. First unsportsmanlike conduct penalty of the game. Jeremy Hernandez was called for that unsportsmanlike. Number 11 for the Colonels. So two penalties on Wilkes has given uh, Kings about 30 yards on this drive, trailing. 31, here comes the blitz, drops the ball, scooped up by the Colonels. James with the scoop. Davon James tried to scoop and score on that. There, the pressure is just by that being created, number 52 came right off the edge. Matt Williams. Right from the get start. And he, nobody picked him up. It was a free shot at the queue. He turned his back. The ball dropped. Number 52 getting congratulations. Williams is a sophomore out of Wheelie Heights, New York. And he, came, he brought the pressure. And then James scooped it up. And everything has gone right. Today for the Colonels, the ball bouncing their way. It really throughout. is. And, and, 
you know, like you're looking at the score thinking, well, it's a lopsided game. They're really putting it to them. But so you don't help yourself out by having turnovers and fumbles. Jules over 100 yards now. The big hit downfield, but not after a 12-yard gain into Monarch territory. Caraccio with a big hit. Carcio coming up like, yeah, he's like flexing that he got a hit on him. But again, watch how Jules, he's just so smooth running, comes in there. That is a That was a big league hit too. Again, but he just gets up. He, he goes, I know I'm going to get hit. <laughs> Again, these two teams will meet next year. Maybe the weather will be like this, September 2nd, 2023. Over at Kings, as the Mayor's Cup will return, it will be the first game for both schools next year. Wilkes headed to the Landmark Conference. Kings in this MAC. Jules again, taken down by Dylan White. Our four Jules on the carry. No gain on the play. Dylan White's a senior, 5'11", 215 no pounder. You'll see he wraps him up. He's trying to hog time, wrestle him down. But again, Jules is just so, he's he's short, shorter type guy. He's got a low center of gravity. He's hard to pick up and throw around like that. White career, 112 total tackles coming in. He is a senior out of Carlisle. So Powell back. He's going to look to throw. Feels the pressure. Going to go deep to the end zone. One-on-one -on -one out there. No flags. Trying to hit Higgins in the end zone. Good defense from Zach Barber. Yeah, Zach Barber does a nice job with this. They went to a three-man front, and then they brought the outside linebacker up on pressure. I, that was great coverage there by Zach Barber. So it's the first third down of the second half for Wilkes, four of eight in that first half. But they've been very efficient, especially putting scores up with on third down. Looking for Jules in the flat. They don't find him. Powell has room to run. Quarterback puts his head down. He's going to be close to the line to gain. He weaved past it, a gain of 11, and another third down conversion. I'll tell you what, if he's 180 pounds, I'd be surprised. He's running. <laughs> wow, look at this. Great move. To, to ball security. Dips his shoulder down. I'll tell you what, he's a big, solid kid, and he's been the difference maker today for the Colonels. That he has, and we have a banged up Monarch with 309 remaining in the third quarter down on the field. Here's what Wilkes did this year. Again, a nice couple wins there from Keystone, probably a tough loss to Lev Val. Um, all, you know, a lot of teams lose to Delaware Valley. Yes. But, you know, they've lost the last two out of three. But again, their quarterback, Rodriguez, went down. He was the top quarterback in the league when he went down. Mm -hmm. Powell got hurt then hey, last week, well noted today, yes. third and fourth string. Totally different team today, as you can see. Well, your playbook goes from now one sheet back to the five or six or whatever they have. Yeah, I mean, it really limits it. The more you go down your depth chart with young quarterbacks, the less they can do. And you don't want to put a ton of pressure on their shoulders. But Wilkes, again, Keystone. Widener, that's a surprising one because Widener for years was always a perennial powerhouse. Them and Del Val down from that Philadelphia area. So they're, they're doing things well up here with a young team. Jamil Thomas, the junior of Upper Darby, was the man injured for Kings. He walked off on his own accord. So first down, again, Powell. Straight quarterback sneak, and he evades one tackle and then gets horse collar down, no flag down. But he's inside the five, first and goal, Wilkes. Well, this game, again, Bob, they, we, <laughs> last year, Kings put it to the Colonels. This year, the Colonels are putting it to the Monarchs. And you're not going to tell your kids not to play just because you're winning That's by 20 or 30 points. Oh, I thought it was a, it looked like a horse car. He just had he, his jersey. He had the jersey, yeah. and he did let go, smartly let go right in front of the official. Gain of 20 for Powell. Wilkes is just going to be putting points up. The most scored points in the game in this Mayor's Cup, 45, 2018 by Kings. Wilkes has surpassed that as Jules goes down inside the five. Second and goal. Number four, 
and jewels in the we'll have to check in the most points they've scored. 76 they scored at one point. Wow. There's Coach Drock with his, years uh, ago. His, his coaches. And I'm sure if they punch this Next one in, goal. the fourth quarter, we're going to see a lot of the underclassmen coming in and maybe seniors that don't get a lot of playing time. Let them have a great finish their career. And that's what these the, both colleges want to do. They want to keep their traditions going. They want their seniors to go out on the, on the top. On a, on a great note. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting fourth quarter with the substitutions. We'll probably see timeouts to make sure they have the right personnel in. Fake to Jules. To the tight end, floating out Jason Dean with his second touchdown on the day out of Blue Mountain. Pass, complete the number 80, Jason Dean for another Colonel touchdown. Yep, there's a flag, too, but I'm sure that was after the touchdown. Here we look at the touchdown again. Here we go. Uh, again, they just run that play action right, and they do a pop. You know, the tight end just slips out, and they slip it to him. Nice job. So we're going to try to get the call from David Stewart from the MAC on what this flag is. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was the over, on Sportsville and Condor, Wilkes, number seven. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. This is Wilkes, number 70, first on Sportsville and Condor on the game. Well, oh, Kurt, uh, the referee's just trying to get things in order. I mean, there's a lot of jarred out there. We talked about the trash talk in this game and uh, another flag down. So the touchdown is good. Trying to put up 59 now, Wilkes. Well, and that, that call was on the backup quarterback, Travis Shaver from Massapequa. Uh, yeah, he's a freshman. He's excited. Um, I'm sure he probably said something he should have. I think it was up. on 70. Oh, 70? Yeah, I thought seven. he said seven. I did too. Okay. I did too. I think it was on Boris. So I want to make sure. we. I think he said 7D, not 7. I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Ross's kick is blocked, picked up by Kings, but 118 left in the third. 58-21 is the score of the 26th annual Mayor's Cup. The 35th overall, Wooks leads 22-12. They're going to add on to that, make it 23-12, their first win since 2019. And Jonathan Drock has his team rolling with Powell at quarterback. And we'll look at the touchdown one more time. Look at that. Play action pass to Jewel. The defensive line and the linebackers flow to the left. And what do they do? They come back to the right. Tight end just kind of slipped out of there. What he's supposed to do, he chips and then goes out. Great call. I love that. Especially when you get the tight ends involved with the game like this. And he had his second touchdown of the game. So the only highlight really today for Kings has been those two touchdown returns in the first half by Tyler Carey. He's back again. They'll get good field position, Will Kings. Shire going to tee it up from his 20 after the penalty on the last play. So now another opportunity for Tyler Carey to make a good return or D. Gregorio. Both have good speed. They should get great field position regardless with that penalty. High kick right to carry from his 25. Finds a gap. Gets taken down inside Colonel territory. Nice return to the 43 yard line. I'll tell you what, number 84 saved, I believe, what would have been another touchdown for him. He's very patient, looks, picks his spot. Watch this. He starts to get daylight. Oh, 94, 94 for the Colonels. Because I think he would have been off to the races for his third touchdown. That's the right kicker, there. Shire. Yep, Brandon Shire. There you the go. Kicker made the tackle. I don't want to say a saving tackle, but, I mean, made the tackle as well. So here comes the Kings offense out again today. 50 plays for just 198 yards. This is a, an offense coming in, as we said, Coach, third in the MAC, averaging 333 yards per game. And they're well under that. Throwback 
to Haley. Haley takes a big hit, gain of seven. But give credit to this defense for playing exceptionally well today. I love, and again, I used to coach defensive line here at, at, for the Colonels. When I see those, how active they are, it, it really makes me really f proud to be a coach of a defensive line that can do that kind of stuff for what they've been doing. They've been doing some twisting and some stunning up front, but basically it's just been their speed. Wide open. Wide open to the end zone. Carey with the score. 44 yard strike. And gets Kings back. The trailing by 30 with the PAT. And this is where Kings has really done all year. They come back and they can do these things. They quick strike. We had, a, I believe, a minute 39, and they only used a minute at 107, and they got a touchdown. So this fourth quarter is going to be really, really great to watch and see how the Colonels react to this now. So Tyler Moore with another touchdown. Second on the day. Snap was dropped yeah. by the holder. Cole and the holder feels it and puts it down, so the PAT will be no good. So Tyler Moore out of Elk Ridge, Maryland, comes back for a graduate student year. Got the COVID year, as they call it. Is the top quarterback in the league coming in. He'll leave with just over 5,700 yards total through the air and 41 touchdowns so far. He's a business major, so good career for Moore. Sure. Not one of the top six, I think, in King's history. But I like the pump fake by Moore on that. I don't know how he got so wide open. There was no play action fake or anything. He just, yeah, you see the team <laughs> back is just looking up like, what was I doing? That was uh, Donnell Mackey Woodson, a sophomore for the Colonels on that one. That You know, it happens, but. Play uh, that. 37 seconds off the clock. You mentioned that, Coach. Two plays, 44 yards is what's going to go in the books. Okay. And it's a 31-point lead now for Wilkes. Bob is so efficient today. I love how his brain's like a computer over here. He's being able to spit out all these facts and figures just like that. Well, I'm doing the math on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone knows. <laughs> math on toes. So Prescavich is senior doing the kicking for his last time in a Kings uniform. He tees it up. And will be Whitaker, the senior from his 13. Takes a big couple big hits. Still dancing around. Finally, Kings takes him down just past the 20. So Nate Whitaker, again, on special teams. He does have a touchdown through the air. So here comes the Wilkes offense out, 22 ticks left in this long third quarter. It's been a long game with all the scoring, as you might expect. So this offense putting up some real good numbers today, 442 yards on 48 plays. That's an average per play of nine yards, Coach. That, that's a nice average. I mean, that's I, a, I could work with that. Yeah, anybody could work with that. <laughs> And their third down, they're five of nine. We talked about how proficient they have been. Jules over 100, gets the ball again. So the starters, for the most part, still in there for Wilkes. They picked up a short gain on that inside zone. They're still battling out there. Again, we still have a long way to go in this game, folks. We're just wrapping up now, going into the fourth quarter. All Wilkes at Schmidt Stadium this afternoon. The 31-point lead, hopes, hoping they get the Mayor's Cup back here in Edwardsville. Fourth quarter on the other side. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup, sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 2022 Mayor's Cup. Just a little score update. It is 58 to 27 with Wilkes in the lead. We just want to also recognize the six District 4 players on Wilkes University's team right now. There are four from Mount Carmel, one from Shimokin, and one from Bloomsburg. In addition to that, there are also two starting players, an O-lineman and a linebacker. 
Bob, back to you. See a lot of local talent on the field. We talk about the old Forge kids, but we just tell you a lot of kids out of District 4, Mount Carmel as well. Flag down. This may be coming back. Big strike. Touchdown, Devin Higgins, the sophomore, but again, a flag right at midfield. Kind of toning down the celebration as everyone saw the yellow Yankee come out. It kind of gets mixed up there with yeah. the, the yellow that the Colonels are wearing today, too. Gold and gold today for the uh, Colonels. We've seen a lot of different combinations. Waiting the call from Dave Stewart. Both teams back, so this one is definitely coming back. So it's a spot foul, so it should be a first down, if anything, for Wilkes. Five seconds into this fourth quarter. Bob I, Don Sechak, Jake Sarwar, you just saw on the sidelines. It's been a high scoring affair. Holding. Offense, number two. Ten yard penalty. It's not a foul. First down. Almost 90 points on the board, coach, <laughs> in a college game. It's like watching the Big 12 today. It is. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Number two is in our screen. Right, he did. He grabbed them from behind. Oh, that was actually 19. No, coming down here. Right there. Okay. Sherrod well, was the guy, number 24, got held. But the referee, he didn't let him go. I think he turned around and just didn't let him go. So, as I said, it's a first down, though, for Wilkes, which is good to roll the clock off. Jules with 113 total yard, uh, yards on the ground. Going to add to that as the starters are still in. Another flag comes in. It's our 13th penalty of the game between the two teams. Ninth, eight for Wilkes. Let's see who this one's on first. Holding, offense, number 65. Well, they were running their power play, their bread and butter, and the left guard, Damian Grulon, 6'3", 295-pounder. He, when he pulled, you'll see him come across your screen in there. Let's see where the hold, what they were saying. Uh, he hooked him, but I I don't know if I would have called that one personally. But Nine penalties for 95 yards for the Colonels. If Coach Strzok is going to complain about anything, got to find something to complain about. You can't do everything. Well, discipline's always one yeah. thing that you you have to keep instilling into your players. Absolutely. Every week, every game, every day. Powell to the air, trying to get it out to Jimmy Johnson. Goes incomplete. Second down on the way. And we've seen a, such a high-scoring game here today. I mean, it's pretty exciting in terms of watching offense, defense. You'll start scratching your head. The defensive coordinator, especially for Kings, has really got to start figuring this out and – it's going to be tough because they, a lot of these kids are coming back for them. So they're going to be watching a lot of film in the offseason, dialing this up. And, Bob, you said that they're going to be starting off their first game next year, yep. correct? Mm -hmm. So what a way to start your seasons with the Mayor Cup. Especially after what's happening today. It'll be fresh in the memories of both teams. Fake to Jewel. Powell going to go to leap deep again in the traffic. Whitaker playing defensive back on Sherrod, knocks it down. And a little stinger there on the left shoulder for Nate Whitaker. Well, we've watched this <laughs> with this setup 24 and 24. Look at him trying to make things happen. He still manages to get the ball off with a kid in his face. And yeah, he did. He landed on that inside part of his left arm. And he's on the side trying to work that out right now. Well, another third down. And keep talking about their proficiency. Five of nine today. It's tough for Kings to get off the field on third down. But it's third and long. They'll give it a jewel. And this time, Dylan White will be there to make the tackle. And the punt team will come on for Wilkes. I was looking down the roster earlier. Again, that was a great play by Dylan White. Number 71 is 385 pounds for the Colonels there. Where did he go? They have him, they have him as one of the up backs in yeah. the second line there. I just saw this massive young man walking across. <laughs> I had to look him up, and wow, now he's out there. 
There you see big number 71. Orlando, nice. End of her end kick. Di Gregorio is going to let it bounce, and it will roll out of bounds at the 27-yard line. 13-14 left in this Mayor's Cup game. It'll be Monarch first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. And Kings will have the ball. And, uh, you know, we talked about Kings. 2002, they finished 9-3. and three. Went to the NCAA playoffs that year. And their coach, Manello, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. There's yes, only been two did. coaches in Kings well. history. <laughs> Rich Manello and Jeff Narr. And it, it doesn't, you can remember that. And he had, and that year I was on the other side with the Colonels. And they put it to us. And, uh... Yeah, there was, there was a little trash talking between the kids saying, hey, we're going to NCAAs, you're going to ECAC. But they had such a talented team. Steve Wilson from Pensbury, Sean Frazier from Harry S. Truman down where I used to coach. They just had a loaded team. Okay. Interesting so play. So interesting Let's play. See. More, did he hand it off to Cohen? Or did he pass it? I'll have to look at the, this again. No, he just so he gets the hit. Oh, ball, ball came, came out. out. So it was a heads fumble. up play. Fumble. Fumble by Moore, picked up by Cohen. Yep. Nice heads up play by Cohen. But Ramos was in there again. Quick hitter to the other side. Moore's pass complete to number 22, Michael. Brings up third Gregorio. down. Three of eight today for third the Monarchs down on third four. down. Sun popping through now here late afternoon. Long game since started to kick off at 12.07. A lot of points on the board, as you can see. Yeah, we need sunglasses coming up. And we're not used to 15-minute quarters no. either. More over the middle. Connects with Carey. And again, Carey, the leading receiver in the MAC, is a criminal justice major, just a junior. Pass, Having a career Tyler college Perry. year here. Well, he's the first in the MAC, down. like you said. Nice job. First See, when I'm, what I like is more when he's run. throwing the ball where the receivers can catch it, they're getting the yards after the catch. A lot of his throws have been down low. And that does that to a disadvantage to the receiver. Or tucks it. Sheds a tackle, still on his feet. The grad student inside, Colonel Territory. And smartly runs out of bounds, Moore not to take a hit. Oh, we have seen, seen some bad tackling today. I, I, I'll put it out there on the table. Well, I mean, yeah, we, no, have. we have. And I'm not sure, I mean, systemically, I think it's across everywhere because there's such the concussion protocol. You don't spend time at practices really doing one-on-ones. You do a lot of form tackling on bags. Uh, but it's not the same. No, I, I totally agree, 100%. More backs. Gonna be, I think, taken down. He is. Number 51, Lance Priestess. A sophomore had the first one. Swallowed him up, but he kind of snuck out onto that. Number seven, Billy Costa. Here it is. He's starting to get swallow up, snuck out of there. Oh, he grabbed him. He still had him he by his He still had side. him. I'll give, I'll give him the sack. <laughs> Give him the sack, right? Absolutely. I dropped him for a loss. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So the backup line in there now for Wilkes. Over the middle to Moore. You're going to say it's a catch to Cohen. To get some of that back. So third down and manageable now for Kings. Moore under pressure again, though. Well, now with these the substitutes coming in for the Colonels, it's pretty easy. If they play their assignment and alignment, they're just pinning their ears back and going because there's such a cushion back there in terms of score. And those other linebackers, they, they're, not, they're still playing. They haven't pulled out their linebackers. Inside hand off to Ellis. And the 250-pound sophomore gives Kings a first down. Goes out of bounds, but... Clock will stop momentarily as they move the chains. So the first defensive line comes back in now for the Colonels. Ellis, pretty good game today. Having a great game. I Averaging mean, over six yards per carry. 11 carries, 80 yards. Reverse to DeGorio. Michael DeGregorio taken down wrestling style after gain of eight. <laughs> Reverse to number 22. How about more on this one? Tyler Moore. After he hands the ball off on the speed sweep, 
he gets involved with the block. Watch this, folks. Hands the ball up, here's the flip. Watch that right there, nice job. Number 17 on number five. That, that's Adam uh, Pittston. Pittston. Yeah, we, we, we know he's been playing tough all game, and the quarterback was able to now put a hit on him. Piston with six tackles on the day. Big rush. Ramos got to him, and Cohen dropped it. Angel Ramos, the junior out of Parkland, it seems like he's been in Moore's face constantly today. I have to give a shout out. I just saw the preview screen. The pep band. Here's the replay right here. Yep. Ball got tipped. It was right there. Go ahead, pep him. band. Yeah, pep band. Come on, talk the about pep it. Let's band. Go, well, pep I band. want to talk about the pep there band because the man that's leading them was one a uh, friend of mine, and he's still teaching at Tunkanic. He's the band. Ken Lucky does a great job with the Tunkanic program, and now he's down here at Wilkes. One yard gain on that. Let's talk about the band again. <laughs> band. Bring the boys back. If they we pan down, there we go. Let's get Ken Lucky in there, the director. Oh come on, you're gonna you're, Bill. No, there Bill's, they go. You're gonna kill Bill. <laughs> no, director. those guys. He works full time at Tunkhannock. If anybody's ever gone to a Tunkhannock football game, those guys are great. They have over a hundred kids on their band at Tunkhannock, and he's he comes down here and coaches the college the band. I think up. it's great that Wilkes has a pep band. They brought that it's back fun. a few years ago. They did. We talked about that then. It's kind of fun. It gives that college feel. We have a shaken up uh, cur uh, Monarch player, I should say, Kings. Eight thirty eight remaining in the game. Uh, one, another guy I have to give a shout out to is longtime equipment manager here at Wilkes, Tommy Dunsmere. He's done it for 40 years, and he's going to be retiring this year. He retired. Oh, he did we, retire. Yeah, we already. paid for a site survey already. Okay, and he's already in Florida. Oh, it's <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> paid for a site survey, and and um, Addy, the uh, athletic director here. Said, okay, we're, we're like we're stopped. Oh, he's retired, gone. Oh, I thought I thought they said at he's the end gone. of the season. Okay, so fourth down, they're going to go to the air. They got it. They pull it out again. Cohen, no flags. So another fourth down call. I think this is the second complete. touchdown on fourth down. For it is. Nine, They've Cohen had two touchdowns on special teams, touchdown. two on fourth down. The Colonels had two on three third downs, third yeah. and longs. What a great play. Moore just throws it up. <laughs> Brandon nine, Cohen nine, pulls nine, in a fourth touchdown on the year. The the Conwell point. Egan product. He's a senior. You were talking about some of the trickery that uh, Jeff Norris is going to have to do, and that was a great one. Dive it in there. Cor the quarterback did a great job with the fake and just jump shot right there for a touchdown. So let's make it a 24-point game. Willing down, if anything. Kick is up and good by Priscavich. 8.26 remaining in the Mayor's Cup. It's been all Wilkes here this afternoon. We'll be right back. Score is now your Wilkes University Cup. And welcome back to the 2022 Mayor's Cup. I'm so excited to be joined by Dr. Barry Williams, the Dean of the McGowan School of Business at King's. Dr. Williams, how you doing? I'm doing good, Jake. All right, Barry, I heard through the grapevine there's a new program that's come to King's just recently. Tell me a little bit more about that. Just yesterday, we did an internal announcement that the William G. McGowan School of Business is going to begin its first sports management program. It's going to take off for students entering the school in the fall of 2023, both as first year students and transfer students. And tomorrow we have an open house and we're going to feature that at tomorrow's open house. And anybody who's interested can come out tomorrow and visit us and get all the information. Absolutely, Barry, you know, for your students at Kings, again, you're saying the ones coming in 23, how would this type of program benefit them in their careers? Oh, this is going to be, this will really give them a leg up. Historically, we've been very successful at placing students in the sports industry. We have a senior vice president at the NBA. We have a executive director of the Penguins Foundation, general manager of the Rail Riders, all our Kings alum. This is going to help our students accelerate into those programs. And being AACSB internationally accredited, we have a global state-of-the-art accreditation and the global sports market and revenue is well beyond $400 billion. That accreditation, our students, and the market out there is going to be tremendous for the students. Well, sounds great. Dr. Williams, thank you so much. Guys, back to you up in the booth. Well, thank you, Jake. Wow, that's, doctor. A, that, that's a, that, amazing, amazing what they have going on at King's. 
Wow. Really at both schools, too. So they we're really going to line don't. up for a, let's say, uh, outside kick, coach. We're going to get a timeout for Wilkes. Well, timeout they, for Wilkes. They're lining up there. Hey, Kings thinks we're still in it, down 24. Well, then you got to. You're going to fight to the very end to the, as they say, the proverbial fat lady sings. And again, you could tell it was going to be an onside. They went from, they broke their formation. They were doing a stack on theirs. They, like, do... They did five and five. They stack them. This time they spread it out because you knew they were going to go the onside. Coach is going to be happy. We're going back to high school next week. Well, you're not even here. <laughs> you're not, done. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're out next week. I'm out next uh, week. We'll I'm go back to high school next week here on my TV WQMY, our Friday night Rivals coverage. Uh, stay tuned. We'll let you know on social media and then our promos on TV what game we will be at. And then uh, because we got canceled last night, we added an Eastern final game December 2nd. Which Coach, will be, which you I'll will be, be back. back. I'll be back for that. I'll be watching you out in the Atlantic somewhere. You're back on the ocean again, huh? <laughs> we're, we're heading down south, yes, on a cruise. 11 days. There, there you go. Have a good time. After the timeout, we're going to line up for the onside kick. Why not? For Scavage has it. Takes a bounce as a go 10. It does. It's grabbed by Washington, I believe. It is a Wilkes player. Nope, number 19, excuse me. You see that, yep, boy, that ball really got a great bounce to it. Schweizerhoff got it, just to add that in, Coach. And again, he had, yep, he had a touchdown earlier in the game. Good hands, good heads up play. Give credit to Kings, just trying it. Why not? We're down 24. It's the Mayor's Cup. 34. So, Wilkes comes back out on offense. We'll see who's the quarterback. 473 total yards today on 54 plays. Powell will be the quarterback. Play clock's at four. They just get on the field. And they line up, and they get it away. Jules, handoff. Eliza Jules, the New Jersey product, having another nice day. Came in with 865 total yards, Coach. So, you do the math. I'm going to tell you how many yards he has right now. He has... Oh, just over 120 some. So he's gonna be close to a thousand. Let's say he's 846 and 120. So he's yeah, he's, he's just so yep, 100 and 118 total okay. yards on on the ground the for the update, board. if they do, and uh, he'll be close to a thousand as a sophomore. We have a banged up Kings player there. You see. That's number 33 for the Monarchs. Jake Rupert, the sophomore of Malvern, banged up. Comes off the field. So Jules needed 135 for 1,000 yards. He's at 118 now, net. So 17 more yards for number four, Liza Jules. Oh, hit the 1,000 mark, which hasn't been done I think in almost 15 years here in the Colonels. I believe the last time was Brett Trickolo. Yep. Um, and boy, what a, what a physical specimen Brett was. A Dunmore product. Dunmore, yep. Great kid. Powell going to tuck it and run it. Powell is going to be one of our players of the game, and he's thrown for six touchdowns. Powell. 314 yards. He's 18 of 29, coach. And you'll just see right there, they just this is a design quarterback keep the entire time. Instead of handing off the ball to Jewel this time, uh, Garino it's ends up pulling from his right guard position, and he just Powell just kept it. They're just going to let the clock roll down. So how about what, explain what QBR is, and then I'll tell you what Powell's is today. <laughs> the quarterback rating. I hate to see what his ra his rating's got to be. What 125? Right going, no, you tell us what it is first. Oh, quarterback rating? Yeah, that's what does that they, mean? That's where they go. They take the quarterbacks, how he's done offensively in terms of rushing, passing. Yep. And and that's what they determine what your rating is. So we, I, 221. All right. Fa <laughs> fantasy folks, there you go. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it that high. I have I've never seen, seen that anybody high. that high. And that gain is enough That's for a eight. first down for Wilkson. Here we go. QBR of 221 for Xavier Powell. Holy and how smokes. happy is Jonathan Drock to see him 
to have him as a backup, as an option after Rodriguez went down. Hey, and, and Coach Strzok, you know, he really was worried about this game. We talked to him pregame about the postseason. He said, we just got to take care of business first. He said he would love to get in there, especially with the way their kids are playing right now. He really is probably going to have to lobby super hard to try to get into one of the bowl games, into the Centennial MAC Conference. Well, it depends what happened around the league. Jules again. Some minus yardage on that. That will help the cause for the 1,000. But if they play next week, you could get that. So you will see right here, they just go with that outside power play, bringing the right side of the line over. And great job there by the Monarchs coming up. Number 10 does a nice job sniffing that out for the stop. Under six to play, no rush for this Wilkes team. And they're 491 total yards of offense here at home at Schmidt Stadium, the Austin Sports Complex, which is really, even since you've been back, has just really grown. Jules again. Oh, they're trying the end around to Whitaker. I mean, the reverse. And Whitaker's go the wrong way. <laughs> they try, I think. Try some yeah, trickery. trickery. You know, they're down. They're up. They're down now. Well, I mean. <laughs> here we go. It, it's a reverse. And he's coming. He didn't. Yeah. Good job by Caraccio, I think, to break that one up. Carcio broke it up. Looked like number one. And, and what I was saying is, you're you're trying to kick them when they're down, and and that just blew up in their face. Advantage Kings on this one. Now they've got third and and half the field to go to try to get a first down. We'll see what they have, what they're going to dial up. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if they come back out right now with the screenplay. We've seen how successful their tight end game has been today. Flag down. What's your decision here on still playing your starters in this game? Is it because it's what the game is? You want to play your seniors out there? How is Jeff Nard going to take that? Wilk still has their starters out. Up, they put 58 on the board. Well, coach, coach has been around a long time. All start. Offense, number 24, never got set. Five yard penalty, they're down. As I was saying, coach has been around the game a long time. He, he knows this is part of the game. This is part of this rivalry. But what they're going to try to do now is they're just going to say, all right, you're keeping your starters in. Because Wilkes really was on the bubble in terms of playoffs. So this could potentially yeah. be the Wilkes kids' last game of the season. So he, he's going to take it with a grain of salt being down by, you know, what the score is right now. And he understands that they might be trying to get Jewel, you know, his 1,000 yards. This could upset them when you start passing the ball. But look at the look at the situation. Intercepted by Sherrod on third and 38 for Kings. Whitaker takes a hit. Dean makes the tackle. But Sherrod, who got burned in the first half, uh, makes a, gets an INT in the books. Again, it was third and 38. You have to pass a ball on this one. I mean, the kid, you're teaching your kids to be com competitors. He tipped it to himself. Impressive. <laughs> well, we do the tip drill almost every day. Well, they do it every day. That's his seventh interception in the league in this year. He's first wow. in the league in interceptions. And that was quite impressive, tipping it to yourself. Wow. He's a Pensbury graduate, 6'2", uh, 155-pounder. Wow. Interception in the last, well, it said five games. Now it's six games. So the streak continues for Dion Sherrod. And Kings is back out, down 24. More out into the flat D. Gregorio. Good coverage by number eight. Number eight on the Wilkes. Defense is Donnell Mackey out of Woodson High School. So Kings will be in a hurry. Trailing 24 under four minutes of play. Clock stops. The weather has turned out beautiful. Mid October, like a mid October day, not mid November. More back, just a three man rush. So they'll go over the middle. Tommy Suryavong makes the catch and takes a big hit. Another old Forge guy. We're, we're just seeing a lot of sprinkling of all the local talent here. Watch this play in here, and Holcomb comes up, just has him. 
and then another guy coming in just laying it in there. Again, they're gonna make sure that they make their marks known on each side of the ball. Going long for Soryavong, well overthrown. Had a step on the defensive back, but would have had been a perfect pass for Tyler Moore. He drops back, you can see that how that's setting up. He's got time, launches the ball downfield. He had two steps on him, led him to the inside in between the defenders, but to no avail. So it's fourth down, and here's a flag. Flag on the field. And a lot of talking as we talked about, trash talking, a lot of back and forth. Somebody may have said something. After the play was over, unforceable in conduct, Will number 15. 15 yard penalty, first down. This is Wilkes, number 15, first, unforceable in conduct, penalty. Holcomb. Huh. Holcomb a senior, 48 total tackles. At 15 total tackles against Leb Val this year. Last time in his uniform, he also picks up an unsportsmanlike. Not the way you want to end your career. I, I, we've always, and every coach will stress and preach the discipline. Don't don't stoop to that level. But sometimes emotions get to the best. And again, we're dealing with young men here. Well, that gives Kings a first down. That is their 20th on the day. Over 700 yards of total offense between both teams. A little give inside to Haley. Haley taken out by Piston again. They run that little counter action. Quarterback acts like he's rolling right, hands the ball off. And they cut back left. Other three to play. To the flat to Cohen. Marshall with the tackle, rid him out of bounds. Well, smartly That's runs out of bounds, gets the first down, down and stops the clock. Tyler Moore, 23 of 37, 217 yards and three touchdowns today. He's been sacked six times though by the Colonels. Hanging in there in his last game. And a flag comes in. We're going to have uh, interference on Wilkes. John Washington out of Brooklyn, the senior, going to be called for that. So that's going to give Kings another first out. And this game just not want to end. Listening to some That's of the fans. Defense number 12. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. First down. So let, let's talk about that quickly. We have a second. I, I've hear, I hear a lot of saying it's overthrown. The ball's not caught, cannot be catched. You hear a lot of that from the fans. What does that mean? Because you see a lot of officials saying, well, if he didn't hold them, he would have caught up to the ball. I mean, yes, it's not, it was overthrown, but. If the ball gets tipped, or if it's, as you said, Bob, mm -hmm. it's overthrown. It's up high, it's uncatchable. It doesn't matter if the defender held him or not. So that's what they were pleading their case about on that one. Um, I, it's more prevalent at the college level than it is down at when we see it mostly on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. Very rarely as I've, have I seen a call in, oh. Keep going. Tommy Soryavong off his fingertips in the end zone. Yeah, no, uh, high school, it's really not, you don't see it no. too much. No, It's usually at the college level, even at the pros, you don't see it at the pros. It's a college thing. So it, it, it doesn't matter if it's catchable or not. You either held him or you didn't, right? right. And that's what it comes down to. And so it, you, the official isn't looking at if it's catchable or not. He's looking, he's looking at the infraction, as they're supposed to do. And that's why there's the other guys on the field, the other officials. They're the ones looking then to say, no, it was uncatchable. More caught from behind by our player of the game, Angel Ramos out of Parkland. Boy, has he had a great game today, number four. Four sacks from the Parkland product. From nice. behind, Moore goes down. Nice job. Look at that. Again, 
the, the problem that the Monarchs are having is how active the feet of the Colonels have been on the defensive line all day. So third down after the sack, timeout on the field by Kings. I don't see anybody shaking up, and uh, this one pretty much <laughs> over, but Kings still hanging in there. Kings is going to drop to eight and two. They'll wait to see where they land in the MAC Centennial Bowl, and then w Wilkes will improve on the, the season, and then they'll wait. They're going to be seven and three overall, and they'll wait to see where they see it and see what happened in the Lev Val game. If they get to go to the bowl series. If not, there may be an ECAC bowl awaiting the Colonels and Jonathan Drock. Well, and it's just so interesting how we always talk about the what ifs and, and who knows. Uh, King struggled this year with Albright. It went to overtime. So let's I'm going to do a quick check to see what the score is of the Lebval game. If my service works better. <laughs> Okay, as you do that, I'll call the play. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch the game here. You watch the game there. Uh, there's okay. nothing. <laughs> Ramos from behind. He takes him down, but he gets it out. And oh. that's going to be a penalty back there on the quarterback. Now, is it targeting? Is it roughing the uh, that passer? Was, that was roughing. They, they yeah. was, well, it was high-low because you had the two guys. Boy, I'll tell you, those two guys from Parkland, they were pouring it on today. I think there's some fans of Angel in the stands as we got a shot there. Good crowd here. I mean, beautiful day for college awesome football, day. wherever you are. After that storm came through. Boy, and it was pouring last night. I woke up to having a pond in my front yard, <laughs> and I don't have a water You don't have a pond. There. <laughs> <laughs> so on first down, Moore to the air over the middle. Cohen still on his feet, breaks the tackle, carries a couple guys in, and it's a Monarch touchdown with 147 left. We keep chipping away, and that's Coach Nor and his staff have preached these kids. you got to fight to the very end, and that's what they're doing right now. They're showing their resiliency and their grit coming in there. there was nice job. He wasn't not going to be. Five gold jerseys there. And he was not going to be denied. Albright is losing 20-7 to in the second quarter. So who knows? I mean, uh, the Wilkes faithful might have keep their fingers crossed. You know, this one's secured. They Now they're hoping on the uh, Lebvel's downfall. Well, no matter what happens, they're going to go out of uh, maybe. <laughs> well, 47 left. They're, they're going to take the Mayor's Cup. They're going to have that to hang their hat on if that's their last game of the year. And what a great way to end your season. If it is the end of their Second season. Charge. Timeout. Kings. Kings. Kings called the timeout on uh, the special on special teams here. Not sure why. Maybe they want to go for two. I, I don't know. I don't know what that would give you, though. That would give I would you say 42. you want to conserve the timeouts. If you, you're going to get onside kick it here. You can serve the timeouts. Correct. Well, believe it or not, folks, there was a 34-point lead for Wilkes. <laughs> it's down to 18 now. They're, they're, and, again, Kings keeps chipping away, and, and that's that's what they, these kids have been coached to do. You fight to the end. Tyler Moore, 25 of 40, 242 yards, four touchdowns, has been sacked seven times. And the Parkland connection really showcased how good they are and, and how much this game meant to them today. So after the timeout, Kings is down to one on the game. They're go for two. Now that's so they're figuring out that two-point formula, Coach. <laughs> so that's 42. You're, now you're down by 26. You're, <laughs> you're still bombing by three or four scores? Four scores. Um, Anyway, Tyler Moore is back on the two-point conversion. Over the middle, it's caught by De Gregorio, and it two, it's good. So Kings puts another touchdown on the board. The two-point conversion is good. The two-point conversion. It's an eight-place, 75-yard drive, 209 off the clock. 
Here is a two point again. Combination of 100 points scored today. That was a good job. I mean, I, I, great call, but I was trying to figure out in my head what that would do numbers wise. But I'm going to get a confirmation, but I believe this has to be most total points scored in a in this game, in a Mayor's Cup I, game. I, I would have to agree with you on that, Bob. I'm not. Total points. <laughs> 100. Even I can add that, Coach. <laughs> So, Wilkes in the gold jersey is going to line up for an onside kick. This is the game that just will not end. It is well over, just over three hours and eight minutes long. Well, it's been an exciting offensive it juggernauts has. game. We've seen a lot of ways that the teams have scored both sides. So, Priscavich has it teed up for the onside kick. Let's see. Didn't work last time. Good hop, takes it, bounce. Didn't go it 10. It didn't go 10. It was grabbed by a Monarch at the nine yard mark. Good call by the officials down there. They Here it is it. again, it has yep. to go 10. And that would be the 45, oh, and he caught it at the 44. Too, yeah, he just was a yard and a half too big. One yard short. Jahan Haley. The running back had it, and I think the great job of the official to notice that. They did, and, and you saw, I, I was watching how the officials work. The line judge came over for the field judge. The field judge went out, marked it, so that way there was no if, ands, or buts of where the ball was kicked to and where it was picked up. So the most total points in this game ever scored was 76. Well, that, so that's been So 24 difference. Let's see what the co uh, referee has to say. The ruling on the field is that the ball was touched by a member of the kick team prior to it going 10, 10 yards. The ball belongs to the receiving team. It was by the first touch. First down, well. Now, if we were watching BCS or FBS, they'd be looking at the replay. They don't have that today. <laughs> They're not taking our feed, just so you know. But that's a good call. Let's give the officials their they, props. They did a great job on that. They and did a great job. I don't think there's been a, they've done a good job all day, I think, in controlling a lot of things they've had to control. So that should just about do it. Just one timeout remaining. Couple plays here and taking a knee. Jules wrapped up again. I don't think he's, he's just going to be short of that 1,000 yard mark, Coach. Um, he did 135 coming in. Well, you asked me earlier about, well, how do you feel about, you got to let the kids go, and, and especially if, uh, a milestone to get 1,000 yards in college, that's a big deal. And, you know, Coach Drock really wants to keep that going. 119 total for Jules, unless he breaks one off here, which I don't know if they'll give him the ball. Got to roll that clock down. Unless he breaks one off here for uh, 18 yards. He's going to be just short of the 1,000-yard mark. Remember, he needs 18. Kings wraps him up. I don't know, much how, I don't know how Jonathan Drock would know that at this point or care at this point, getting him the ball. So our players of the game are going to be Xavier Powell, 314 career total yards through the year, six touchdowns, as Kings calls a timeout. So that's Xavier Powell is going to be our offensive player of the year. Defensively, we're going to go with the Parkland product, Angel Ramos. Four sacks on the day, Coach. That's awesome. I love Totaled it. Eight total tackles, five, uh, six total for a loss. <laughs> he was three, three solos for a loss and three helped and an assist. So Jake Sarwar will do our interviews after on the field. He'll also maybe grab Coach Drock. And talk about how big a win this is for his team after losing the last two of three. Definitely, definitely makes uh, going into Thanksgiving a little bit easier. And everyone forgets that they think the season's over. It's just getting started for coaches because now they got to get on the road. On the road, they're recruiting, recruiting yep. and, and it's a nonstop deal. Um, yeah, being able to tweet kids and, and text kids has, has made it easier, but you still have to get that personal. Oh, oh, Jules boy. C. 
Let's see what he's at. Clock stops. 122. Wow. That was a First down. Clock should roll then, right? No, nah, he, he was out of bounds. Out of bounds. Bringing in, shuffling in some uh, backs. And they'll go into the victory formation. So Jules gets the 1,000-yard mark on that carry, 139 total, waiting for the update. So 1,004 for Eliza Jewell, and what a year for the running back. First in the MAC. More importantly, in this 26th annual Mayor's Cup, Wilkes gets the cup back. The final score will be Wilkes 58. Kings College 42. It's the first Colonels win over the Monarchs since 2019. Both teams shaking hands. Then there'll be some on-field presentations of the cup and an MVP from each team that's sponsored here as part of the Mayor's Cup action. Jake's gonna try to grab our players, but they wanna shake hands, so we're gonna delay that, Coach. So final numbers, 488 total yards for Wilkes on 64 plays. Xavier Powell, as I mentioned, 314 through the air, six touchdowns through the air, and that's the total difference over last year. Overall, Kings had 25 first downs in the game. They end with 71 plays on for 344 total yards. They put up 42 points overall. So they did make a nice comeback, but the, they're going to end up just a little bit short, just about 14 points. 16 points short of pulling off the victory. Wilkes will improve overall 23 and 12 in this series. And some jawing going on, as you might expect. They're going to separate them on the field. Trying to separate them. Again, this will linger in the minds of both teams. Kings next week will play a game in the MAC Centennial Bowl, where and if they host, still to be determined. Wilkes are waiting to see if they get in the bowl series and or an ECAC bid as the alma mater being played here for Wilkes University. <laughs> Players of the game are getting lined up. Jake. Jake is down there with Xavier Powell and Angel Ramos after this big win, Jake. Hey guys, that's right. I'm here with our top two players of the game. Guys, you just won the Mayor's Cup. How does it feel? I mean, it feels great, man. We worked so hard for this all year, and it's just great to have this accomplishment and get the Mayor's Cup back this year. Angel, you got that final sack that sent King's College, and you guys got the actual cup back. How does that feel? Uh, it feels amazing. This is something we worked on, uh, worked for for like this year, because last year they got us, and we wanted to get it back. So it, it feels amazing. Talk to me really quick about the momentum coming into the game. How'd you guys feel? I mean, we knew we had to start fast. Um, offense, we knew we had to get out of the gate, start scoring points immediately. And that's what, we, that's what we did. The line was blocking great. Receivers were running that routes, and we just gelled together. It was great. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank Congratulations you. again. Thank you. Your attention to the Back to you guys up in the booth. Greg Kent, 
and King's College Associate Vice President and Executive Director of Athletics, Cheryl Ish, to present today's awards. At this time, we will announce the team MVPs of today's game for both squads. First, for King's College. The 2022 Team MVP Award goes to Brandon Cohen. Brandon had 11 receptions for 94 yards and two touchdowns today. Congratulations, Brandon. Today, what a game for both teams! Exciting. 58, 100 <laughs> points total scored in this game is just amazing, Coach. And uh, great job by Xavier Powell stepping in. Don't know 100 percent, 75 percent. Great job at the quarterback position. Wow, talk about a difference in the game. He came in, took control offensively, passing. Who knew Wolves could pass the ball that well? I'll tell you what, 100 points. They just blew the old record out of there. And again, congratulations to the Colonels on getting the Mayor's Cup, but this is such a great tradition. A absolutely, 35th meeting overall, and the, probably the most points scored in this game. Unbelievable, it's it a was. long one, but it was a great game. Great college football game for the local area. And again, being the closest rivalry in the country, they, they left nothing left out on that field. They played their hearts out both sides all the way to the end. Okay, if you're Kings, how do you regroup now? Well, short-term memory loss, you just got to forget it. They're going to fix the things that they know they can fix and control what they control. And now they've got to think about that playoff situa uh, situation that they're going to be in, whether it's the NCAA bid or it's going to be that Thank Centennial Bowl game. Okay, on that note, the Mayor's Cup is held up high by the Wilkes University oh, Colonels. Wow. The final score again, 58 to 42 for Jake Sarwar. For Jan Cichak, for the entire Fox 56 sports crew, this is saying bye-bye on a beautiful day in Edwardsville. You're watching the 26th Annual Mayor's Cup, sponsored by King's College and Wilkes University.